Well, that took a little bit longer than I was expecting. I had it set to automatically detect the best server, and uh, normally I just have it selected manually, so yeah. So that took a couple minutes there, but the good news is we're live. It's the WAN Show, and our topics <clears throat> for today are extremely exciting. Number one is Slick is Sick, and I'm making them work anyway. <laughs> Yep. Isn't that fantastic? Go report it to someone who uh, thinks that that's a problem. I guess your mom would probably be the only one who would care. Yep. But uh, she'll care a lot and she'll let me know all about that. Um, yep. Intel has launched Ivy Bridge E. So for those of you who don't know what the E stands for, it stands for uh, extreme or enthusiast or um, epidural or eggs. Uh, we don't know what it stands for, but basically it means that it's on the higher end LGA 2011 platform versus LGA 1155, which is what Ivy Bridge was initially on. Also, we have new details about Intel's upcoming Broadwell architecture. So those two topics in particular, we're going to be discussing with our special guest this week, Tiny Tom Logan from Overclock3D.net or Time to Live Customs on YouTube. And we're also going to be talking about Microsoft's big move, big power play move, but billions of billions of dollars to purchase Nokia's devices and services business as well as license a whole bunch of patents and other cool stuff like that and finally Samsung's Galaxy Gear I'm holding up my wrist as if I had one but I don't <laughs> so maybe at some point I'll have one but then again maybe not because I don't use a Samsung smartphone and at launch the Galaxy Gear will only work with the new Tab 10.1 and the Note 3 which might seem bewildering, but there, there may actually be a reason for this. So without further ado, intro time! So just a reminder, guys, we are sponsored by Squarespace. So squarespace.com slash Linus, you can get 20% off on new accounts if you use offer code Linus9. So I know that that text there is wrong. They actually updated the deal for this month like two days ago. So there you go, guys. 20% off. Use offer code Linus9. And you might kind of go, well, I've never actually heard of Squarespace before. Why would I want 20% off? And why would I use offer code Linus9 if I don't even know what it does? So Squarespace is basically an easy way to create your own website. They handle the hosting. If you sign up for a year, they actually even throw in a domain. They've got a bunch of different templates, over 20 now, that allow you to configure your website, whether it's a store or a blog or a gallery for your hardware that you want to... Do I say hardware? So I've got like hardware. A gallery for your hardware. Okay. <laughs> Please don't, <coughs> please don't make that site on Squarespace or anywhere. <laughs> Thank you. Anyway, guys, so Squarespace is our sponsor today, and a big thanks to them. And as always, our live guests are powered by Razor Comms. I never get that right when I try to point out. I'm like, yo, somewhere. <laughs> uh, so if you use that bit.ly link right there, you can try out Razor Comms. It is in beta, and it's not perfect, but we've definitely had some good experiences with it that we can't necessarily say about some of the other clients we've been using. In fact, we had a big problem with Skype over the last little while. You guys have noticed we've been streaming at kind of horrible quality. The show has been going down in the middle of us trying to stream the show to y'all, and it's been generally a big, big problem. So it turns out that even the Skype beta does not address the issue with the IP resolver allowing um, someone malicious who knows your Skype ID to get your IP and DDoS the bejesus out of you while you're trying to stream a show. So as much as I might have thought it was Shaw, my ISP, and as much as it was Shaw the first time around, yeah, yeah. Um, the problem no longer, we believe, lies with Shaw and it actually had to do with us being attacked. So I no longer use Skype. I'm off Skype. Goodbye Skype. No more Skype. So there you go, guys. We, uh, we shouldn't receive any sort of interruptions today. However, now that I've said it, 
it's like why do you always do that i know i know i know it's it's like i just actually can't resist uh reminder our special guest again powered by razor comms is tiny tom logan from overclock3d.net on youtube you can find him at youtube.com slash time to live customs so he'll be on in a little bit we're gonna be talking about intel's new stuff but i guess without further ado why don't we kick off our first big topic which is tesla's model s is the safest car ever tested by the National Highway Traffic and Safety Administration. How many How many of that car could they fit on top of its own roof? I think it was something like four cars. They could actually take four Model S's and stack them on top of one Model S before the roof would collapse. That's pretty insane. So you couple that with the fact that, like, there's a bunch of stuff about the design that is inherently better, and then there's stuff where they went and made it better. So think about this. Okay, so there's no engine in the front. How do modern cars work? Older cars, uh, designed back in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, were designed to be very rigid. Yeah. The idea was that when you hit something, you wanted the car to be strong. Yeah, yeah. And like, you know, you, you break through you whatever want, you it is. You want to win. Yeah, yeah you want to win. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, <laughs> but... A bigger battering ram. In recent decades, it's actually changed, and the way that they've designed cars is with what are called crumple zones. So the idea is that instead of, like, dead stop, for those left for dead folks out there, yeah, dead stop, uh, instead of dead stopping, which can cause you to become dead because you hit the dash really hard, the idea is that you actually slow down the deceleration process while you're crashing by having the car crumple into itself, but in such a way that the passenger's area the past area. yeah is not affected so tesla in their infinite wisdom or luck or whatever you want to call it well their cars don't have engines <laughs> so in the front of the car instead because we're used to a traditional shape it's like when you designed a car you know 30 years ago it was like oh well okay we need somewhere to put the engine i guess uh you got two options hood or trunk and so most people went the hood route, some people went the trunk route. Um, so Tesla doesn't have an engine in the front. So what that means is because we've got a shape that we're used to seeing, which would accommodate that, and there's a lot of space there, that's a big old crumple zone, which is very, very cool. They've also designed things like the rear-facing seats. Like, honestly, like I was looking this up last night, and I was like, hon, should we get, should we get a Model S? <laughs> and she's like, how much are they? I'm like, um, uh, like, um. like 80 grand to start? Without the like rear-facing kid seat that I'm about to talk about, she's like, "Yeah, I think you already know the answer to that." <laughs> so uh, anyway, there's a there's a they can install rear-facing seats so you can seat up to seven people in it, and they have like a double bumper system that allows even rear collisions to protect those occupants. So okay, so let let's put this in perspective. You should have given her the safety speech. They, you spend anything on protecting the baby. That's right. Think of the children. Think of the children. So they exceeded. Every safety score for a sedan, then exceeded every safety score ever for an SUV, then exceeded every safety score ever for minivans. <laughs> so even though it's only a sedan, it's as safe as those other vehicles, according to the testing, which was revised in 2011 to be much more, uh, much more difficult to score well in. Um, right, one of the other inherent things about it. So because batteries are heavy, and the batteries are mounted very low down in the oh, car. Cool. That actually gives it an advantage in terms of handling and also makes it extremely difficult to flip. The, yeah, the roll over. Yeah. So during testing, they actually had to use a quote unquote, this is all from Tesla's press release. So they had to use special methods to even flip the car. <laughs> because it's like, well, kill the weights in the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> so now what? I mean, go, go fill a two liter full of like, you know, lead shot and like try to tip it, right? And it's, like common sense I guess but obviously if you have something like an engine that you can't just build under the car then what are you supposed to do yeah. so anyway if you guys are if you guys are interested in checking out a little bit more detail about basically me getting all excited because I have like kids now so I'm all like oh I need a car that's safe oh my God, safety reading I know right I'm gonna drive on a motorcycle all day so it's not shh, it's not only overall five star but actually scored five stars in every single category which has never been done so I think uh, this graph right here is supposed to kind of it's mean something but the Model S is kind of like this weird outlier data point I, I don't even know how I can right yeah I can use my mouse here it's like this weird outlier 
so it's the relative risk score and then this shows kind of everything else and where it falls and it's like yeah you're good so one thing that's also covered in the press release is that there hasn't actually been a fatality in a tesla model s yet I mean, obviously that won't last forever. Yeah. There have been some some pretty some pretty good crashes, but no one's actually died yet. And they also point out that there have been no fires. No fires. Not a single fire. Not a single fire yet. Not on a production unit. So there have okay. been fires. Okay, yeah. 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 But but not not production fires. That's good though. Yeah. No, it's outstanding. I'm like I'm like super thrilled because as much as this is super not relevant to me because I don't have any I like I was putting on just for fun right like I was putting on like the options I'd want I'm like well I want the extended battery and like yeah I want the sound system and like I want all this stuff and and I was like, oh yeah, it's like a hundred grand. Yeah. By the time I put in the stuff I want, yeah. I'm just like, okay. So what I'll do is I'll wait for someone else to decide what they want, buy one, like like lose their job and then I'll buy it from them. Yeah, second hand cars. That's how you do it, man. Never bought a new vehicle to this day. You know what? Guys, hit us on Twitter. Um at Linus Tech, let me know your thoughts on buying a new car versus buying a used car. What do you do? And in 140 characters or less, why do you go that route? I'm very, very curious to hear what you guys think. Me too, actually. Uh, speaking of hearing what you guys think, Microsoft buys Nokia's devices and services business. So this is interesting. So this, this is a post from Guns Cool on the forum. He's all like, okay, so what did Microsoft buy exactly? The original source is The Verge because they're awesome. And uh, other than that one time, I had to kind of burn them on something. I was going to say, no, it's been twice now. Is it twice? Yeah. Okay. Well, whatever. They're still, they're still actually pretty awesome. I still like The Verge. I still really like them. So pretty much they're, they're, they're buying the devices and services division, including, I think it was something like 32,000 employees. Um, let's see. Yeah, 32,000 employees will be transferred. I think it was something like 16,000 of them or 18,000 of them were in manufacturing and distribution. So this is very much a hardware play. They, they're, they're, buying, they're buying the hardware. Um, they licensed their patents for 10 years, which Microsoft has the right to renew sort of at their discretion. Yeah. Um, um, this was all for $7.18 billion, dollars. and the idea, so this was one of Balmer's comments on the latest, uh, the latest um, shareholders call or whatever kind of call he was on, was it'll allow them to better integrate the branding. And among other things, I, I mean, I really hope there's more to it than that. Yeah. But like one of the questions was like, well, you know, the branding's been uh, kind of confusing, like, you know, lo Nokia Lumia 920 you know, Windows Phone 8, like, what is that? Uh, and it is a good point. Windows Phone 8 is kind of a sort of kludgy, yeah. clunky name compared to Android or iOS. Like, yeah. Catchy. And they always have, yeah, I'm not going to get into that right now. But, but I yeah. really hope there's a deeper plan than that. So, I mean... It just seems weird. And then there, wasn't it Nokia that just did the, the KitKat break thing for Samsung? Yes. So it's interesting that Microsoft is doing an acquisition at, at being a very passive company and they're acquiring someone who's traditionally quite aggressive. It's funny though because they've been they've been less like that lately. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's that's been my observation. I was actually pretty surprised at the KitKat thing cuz I haven't seen them be crazy for a while. Yeah. And like, you know, Microsoft was going on the attack uh, against YouTube yeah. against Google for the whole YouTube app thing on that's Windows true. Phone. Um, where it's just like, here, we're just going to start like writing open letters and doing things like that. They've been, um, they've been very communicative about Xbox One overall. You know, whether that was something, things people wanted to hear or not is a whole other ball of wax. And they, I mean, they've gone back on a lot of the strategies that they were talking about there. But I mean, all of this <coughs> is sort of very interesting, except that we're not going to see any of the fruits of this acquisition for quite a while. I mean, look at the Motorola acquisition by Google. Yeah. We're just now getting the Moto X. Yeah. That's the first device that's actually the, the, the product of that acquisition as opposed to being something that Motorola <clears throat> had in the pipeline already. Uh, so let's go ahead. I want to hear I want to hear what folks have to say on that Twitter blitz right there. So we got 77 tweets. Here we go. Someone says, I'm not 16, so I don't buy cars, but I'll be buying a used car when I get one. 
If I had the money, I would buy brand new. It would be all mine and that's a nice feeling. Okay, I agree that that's a nice feeling, but that's a very expensive feeling. My nice feeling is having that amount of money in my bank account. Yeah. That I would have saved. That's a nice car. feeling. And like the four vacations that I could go on. Well, I guess if you can, could afford both. Mr. Lamb says, Definite, de definitely used. If I bought a car, it'd be secondhand because I'm a student. I'm mechanically inclined, so I would definitely go for a used car. As long as it works fine, isn't an eyesore to look at, it's fine for me. Someone says, every time I open my browser, there's an echo. Huh. That's interesting. I don't see anything. Hmm? Is it Firefox? No? Okay. Well, at any rate, let's go back to, let's go back to our Twitter blitz. Someone says, your stream is on in the background. You know what, I think it's, uh, it's coming through these headphones. So I'm going to go ahead and shut those down. Okay. Newer is usually better. Everyone loves shiny and untainted. However, if it works, why pay thousands more? Okay. A vehicle is already the worst investment of money possible. Best to minimize the amount of money you're spending. Never bought a car because I'm just 16. Wow, we've got a lot of young viewers today. New car. You get warranties and bonuses. Used equals higher chance it has fault in the warranty. Okay. Maybe. Because you can buy new cars that still carry warranty. Used cars. Used cars, yes. And can... many used cars, even if they don't carry their original warranty, if you're buying the used car from a dealership, it can come with a dealership warranty that'll last for about three months. Yeah, so, I mean, I totally disagree with you. I, I, I'm definitely on the... Uh, but if you, buy, if you buy a used car from a random person, it is highly likely that it will not have any form of warranty on it. Yes, that may be true. Depends on what condition he's talking about. Someone says new, more fancy that way. Uh, buying a used car is best investment ever. I paid less for my car than my computer. Used in good condition. Okay, so basically people are pretty much, uh, pretty much in agreement on all of this, that used is the way to go. However, of course, there is, the, uh, there is always that sort of that, that brand new feeling. <clears throat> and I've done it before. Not on anything as big ticket as a car, but yeah, I've definitely done it before. It's like, yeah, I could get this cheaper, but... Uh, but uh, I'm gonna get this. No. One. Okay. Do you want to cover Android KitKat? Android is there's not a ton to cover there. No, no, just the uh, the 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 partnership. So guys, so check check the, this out. Okay. Do you want as to far as Android I know, KitKat? there's no real money changing hands, a which is a there, really but, interesting uh, the, part. The, the but they're making a whole bunch of so different. Guys, they're making. Uh, okay, as far as what is it? Know, Android shaped no KitKat bars. Yeah, so they're going to have 50 million specially marked and or specially marked KitKat bars with uh, with Android Androids on them. Um, it's going to be part of like a promotional deal. So the idea is that Google and Nestle are going to be contributing both ways to make this beneficial for everybody. Uh, there's also going to be 500 specially produced KitKat in the shape of the Android logo that Nestle is claiming uh, took weeks to create in a secret location. So these are like, I don't know, like handmade or something. They've apparently been in talks about this since 2012. So it was like something ridiculous. At, uh, I don't know why it matters. Well, it's great marketing for KitKat. I don't see it being that fantastic marketing for Android. No matter what dessert they chose, they would have gotten an incredible amount of news like I don't, I don't see this being super beneficial for android for me the the funny thing to me is that it took so long for nestle to decide about this um when to me it is pretty much a no-brainer yeah nestle should have done this like i like i think it took them over a year to decide i, I understand there are challenges so in north america for example hershey is actually the owns the distribution rights for Kit Kat bars so you know hershey's not getting anything out of this you know, maybe the challenge is, I don't know, um, printing those labels and re kajiggering whatever it is that they have to redo in order to change a label. Um, but it seems to me like just the most obvious thing yeah, in the world. Especially for them. For Android, like, I'd want money. I'd want lots of money. Well, that was, that was our initial discussion before I found out that they didn't pay anything for it was, well, how much do you think this cost uh, Nestle? Nothing. That's so weird because... Like, like I just said, Android could have picked any dessert. It doesn't matter. They could have gone cream puff. 
and like it would have gotten 10 billion different networks talking about it. And... Well, there is the whole uh, letter letters corresponding to revisions. Right. Yeah. Okay. So they were uh, the the rumor, and uh, Google even referred to it internally as key lime pie, was that it was going to be key lime pie, but apparently key lime pie wasn't recognizable enough or something. So I don't know. I wonder in terms of co-branding, like is this <coughs> is this opening up like a whole like ball of wax? Like our candy companies going to be lining up to create like a huge like candy and like create a craze around it Do to like, like uh, align with an upcoming Android. The, like Mr. Big Nexus or uh, Mr. Big. Oh, why can't I remember the name of it for? But those big, those big phones. Edsel has one. Oh, no. Note, Mr. Big Note. Yeah, or it's like... And it's like a Note 4, but it's called Mr. Big Note. Or something like that. Like, how uh, <laughs> how how crazy is this going to get in terms of co-branding? I, I don't have a clear answer to that right there. So we have our guest coming up in about five minutes, but we've got time for one more topic before we get into that. Why don't we jump into the DRAM plant fire? So this was an article on Tweaktown. So for those of you who aren't familiar with the way that commodities work, um, if you can find RAM for cheap, um, someone says still a lot of echo. Yeah. I have no idea where it's coming from. The second you open this browser, Minimize that. Minimize that. Minimize this. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So so it's when I'm screen sharing. So there's no echo right now. Apparently. Which makes none of... Oh, there it is. Wow. Okay. Well, my bad. Wow. All right. So here we go. Best best strip size. No, that's not what I want. Okay. Uh, okay. So for those of you who aren't familiar with how Hynix works... Or Hynix. Ah, see, now I'm all confused. How commodities work, <laughs> supply, <laughs> supply and demand is pretty much the name of the game. Uh, DRAM manufacturers, um, I mean, you know, you can, you can kind of point at any commodity and go, okay, it's possible for supply to so far outstrip demand that they could be selling at a loss. But uh, traditionally, the DRAM guys, the Flash guys, before Flash just went completely crazy and is in every device ever, yeah. could even be operating at a loss because it cost you less to be running the fabs at full capacity and selling for a small loss than it did to not be running the fabs. So, all right, so that's fine. But when production capacity goes down, and you can see here there's a big fire and there's a lot of smoke, that dramatically affects the price of whatever that commodity happens to be. So Hynix supports something along the lines of one third of the world's DRAM needs, uh, including um, I think they were saying this this particular facility was providing pretty much everything for Apple. Um, it was uh, it was going to be shipping out to any number of different devices. We're going to have the memory here integrated. Anything from you know obviously upcoming graphics cards was another one that could be affected by this. Yeah. Even toys for the holiday season could be affected by Anything this. Anything that could possibly utilize those chips. Anything that could possibly utilize those chips will be affected by this. And this is something I didn't think about, but apparently the issue is not so much the fire, but actually the smoke. So yeah. the smoke damage, I mean, think about a clean room where you're allowed to have sort of, you know, like a handful, like actually you can, you can count them on your hand. You can have like a handful of particles floating around that are not like oxygen, nitrogen, like gases that are, that are exist in the atmosphere um, in, order to, in order to classify as a clean room and in order to manufacture these products. Okay, so now like dump a bunch of smoke in there. Like you got to look at something like that and go like, what's the process for even cleaning it at that point? Like, are you better off just like gutting it and like building a new one almost? Like how, how do, can you even clean it? For clean rooms, I, I actually wonder. Probably I, take the walls down. Like, don't rebuild the whole building, but, like, just... You probably have to get rid of that stuff because... Uh, I guess they're not using drywall. Plexi? Think about how long something smells like smoke, even once you get it all yeah. off. Even if there's just a little bit left on it. Like, I... This is going to be a big problem. And, you know, think about what happened with hard drives during the Thailand floods, where prices doubled, tripled overnight. Um, they, it took well over a year for pricing to settle back into where it was pre-flood, to the point where now hard drives are super cheap again. But DRAM is going to be doing the same thing, guys. So if you can find any RAM on the cheap, go. Do it now. This, find... The second I read this article, I checked NCIX. 
the RAM was the same price, but I don't expect that to last that long. It won't last forever. Believe me, it will not last forever. So, uh, you know, find someone who's selling it used or, or figure out how to pull the trigger pretty quickly if you do need a memory upgrade, because this will affect things for uh, quite a long time. So I think we're pretty much ready to have, uh, to have Tiny Tom call into the show. I'm just going to go ahead and grab his lower third here. I actually am not 100% sure how, uh, how I can get this in here quickly. Oh, boom. You, you can drag and drop in XSplit? I had no idea. Maybe that's new. There you go. So we're going to go ahead and fire up comms here. So Tom's I'm supposed to show, join yeah. this one. There we go. And then invite him. All um, right. Inviting Tiny Tom. There he is. Boom. And we are turning this bad boy on. All right. So, yeah, microphone blue snowball. <laughs> Do not auto adjust because we've had problems with that before. All right. Tom, are you there? He is not connected to mic, but we also have apparently no mic signal. We also have no mic signal. You've got to be kidding me. I thought you guys uh, I thought you guys did a test call here. We did. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, uh, <coughs> did you happen maybe, to do the test restart. call with the configuration that we're using? Uh, kind of, yeah. Kind of. <laughs> ah, yes. Okay. Restart Razor Comms, please. From now on, test calls are done with exactly the audio configuration that we're going to be using. Because that will make everything better. And that will be good. And then everyone will be happy. So in the meantime, guys, why don't you blitz us on Twitter? So it's uh, at Linus Tech on Twitter. Let us know if you have any questions for Tiny Tom or if there's anything you want to say to him in general. We will be doing at least one Twitter blitz with him where we can go through and answer some of your questions. So that's going to be a heck of a lot of fun once we get this going. And of course, when you're, on, when you're under the gun, when the pressure's on, it's always trickier to get things working. Yes, yes. Awesome stuff. There we go. All right. So we're on voice chat. Tom, are you there? Are you with me? He's, he's not. Uh, he's in the chat, but he has not clicked because you'll see the mic symbol beside him if he's actually joined. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. So let's go ahead and. Hey, are you ready? Turn on your mic. Ready. Are you ready? ready? Hey. Spelling is not a strong point for me. I think it was your typing angle. Okay, well, thank you. All right, in the meantime, why don't we cover something else that's really, really brief here. Oh, says my mic is on. Uh, here, maybe I'll just try calling him here. Sure. And you and I can just get, like, real cozy here. Can you hear me can now? Can you invite me to this chat? Can you hear him? Yes, I can. You can just invite me to this chat. Hi, guys! <laughs> well, that was enthusiastic. Thank you so much for joining us here on the show. How are you doing today? I'm actually really tired. It's just after 1 a.m. in the morning. You're very lucky to have me up this late at night and not be in a nightclub. <laughs> <laughs> that and it's been a pretty busy period lately. Do you want to jump right into our first topic here, which is Ivy Bridge E? You've uh, probably spent a fair bit of time on this. Go. I've actually been told to say that Slick is fired because of the <laughs> audio problems at the beginning. <laughs> but yes, we can go straight into uh, 2011 if you like. Let's, let's do this. So we, um, I mean, honestly, between you and me, I mean, were you expecting any better than what we got? Um, it's a bit of a difficult one, really. I was really hoping, as most people were, I was hoping the overclocking was going to be better, um, to the point that when I got my sample from Intel and I told them what my original results were, because uh, I've, I've had a selection of CPUs now, they, uh, I said to them, I'm, I can get 4.5 really easy, 1.3 volts. It's going to be, you know what I mean? That in itself is a little bit disappointing. I'm needing a lot more volts to get beyond that. And, uh, yeah, so I, I told them that. I spoke to some Asus engineers, and we are actually talking quite well again at the minute. Um, and they sent me some more CPUs, and I still struggle to get, you know, 4.6 out of it. But I suppose the, the thing that we need to kind of remember is 
a lot of people kind of fixate on their I can only get 4.4 or 4.5 or 4.6 gigahertz, but it is still keeping up with the, the really, really quick overclocking versions of the previous generation. So it really depends on, you know, what you're going to be expecting from your chip. So tell me this then, um, in an ideal world, what would you have wanted to see from Intel? Because for those of you who haven't sort of read any reviews about Ivy Bridge E or who know much about it, Intel has taken the approach where instead of using an eight core CPU like they did on Sandy Bridge E and fusing off two of the cores so it's a, an effective six core, Intel has actually reduced the die size of Ivy Bridge E in two ways. So it's a native six core now, and then number two is they have actually shrunk the manufacturing process. So from a cost perspective, Intel has kept pricing the same. They have improved performance slightly, but they have dramatically <coughs> lowered their cost of manufacturing this chip. Do you feel like you're getting an enthusiast grade product here, Tom? Uh, it's a really difficult one, actually, because uh, the, the reason why they, they uh, fused off the two cores before was because essentially they made one wafer for all of the 2011 chips. The yes. 3820, the 3930, 3960, 70. And all they were the all Xeons. The same. And that, that was the point I was just about to get to. They were all the same. All they ever did was speed bin, which actually yeah. kept prices down. Um, and we've obviously not seen yet whether we're going to get um, uh, Sandy Bridge E Xeons with eight cores or not. And I think that's really the point that we, you know, that, that will be the point that we know, you know, what Intel's got planned because it's now making me wonder whether the Xeons are going to be uh, much, much lower power use but possibly more cores because there was talk a little while ago of um, them maybe getting up to that 10 core marker. Uh, so again, it's, it's still very kind of up in the air and we don't know, you know, really what's going, going on yet. But from the enthusiast point of view, I don't think that we've really got um, too much to moan about because if you've got enough money to buy a 4960X in the first place, you're not really going to be worrying about, you know, if it does 4.5 or 4.6 gigahertz, all you're really going to be worrying about is uh, the, the speed of your RAM because obviously the memory controller is much, much better on this generation. Uh, all of my original three, uh, sorry, all of my original 2011s, so the 3960s and the 3930Ks, I struggled to get above 2133. So you'd have to do the base clock overclocking to be able to get past that 2133 marker. Whereas the 4960X, I could literally just go into the BIOS, put 1.65 volts into the memory voltages, manually set my memory timings and just literally select 2400 megahertz. And every single one of the CPUs I got would instantly boot up at 24. And that was even with uh, all of the overclocks enabled as well. So the memory controller is much, much stronger um, but the other thing that we need to kind of bear in mind is, yeah, okay, the, the overclocks are um, not great, but they are as quick as much faster previous generations, but they're also using a lot less power. Um, we were noticing kind of at least 50 watts difference between uh, the uh, Sandy Bridge, sorry, the, the, the original 2011s and then these newer yeah. ones, so the 3960X and then the 4960X. So for them to be as quick with lower clocks um, and then using less power, they, they have made a little bit of a step forward. And to be honest, I think it's just Ivy Bridge and Sandy Bridge uh, 1155 chips all over again. So I pretty much yeah. think anyone could have made these reviews even before the process has come out if we really wanted to take an educated <laughs> guess. <laughs> One thing to add in defense of them, although as a consumer, I don't think anyone would care is, uh, or that much at least if you're buying one of these expensive chips, is the lower power draw like you're talking about. If, you, if, you're, if you're running servers, you can get charged per wattage. I'm getting this information from Winspeed, but he's completely correct. Um, so 120 watt draw at, at per, you're getting $20 a month increase. Okay, so getting a but wattage, again, I mean, don't. most of the people watching are not are running not server blades. Yeah. I mean, these are people yeah, who are... Really, that's what I'm saying. Like, for consumer, none of them are really going to care. But 
Yeah. The, the average gamer, well, the average user that's going to be using um, one of these CPUs at home isn't really going to care. The only time that uh, the, the lower power usage is really going to make any difference is if, for example, um, you're like Crytek, because they're based in the UK, and I know they're just about to upgrade. They've got a, an absolute ton of 4960Xs just about to go in. Um, and when you've got that many uh, CPUs <coughs> running at max for so long, then you are going to make a, a saving on your electric bill. Yeah. But for someone that's you know buying it for home and is going to be running three or four 780s, they've obviously got enough money that they're not going to be worrying about an extra £50 on their electric bill at the end of the month. Right, exactly. And you know what? Part, it, it's funny you bring this up because we don't, uh, we don't have many guests that are from different regions because you're talking a lot about power savings, whereas here in Canada, where most of our power comes from the like falling water that's just everywhere, <laughs> um, our power is phenomenally cheap. I mean, we're talking about when I crunch the numbers, even based on California, which is, I think, about two or three X the power cost that we have here in British Columbia, um, getting an 80 plus gold power supply versus an 80 plus or even like non 80 plus power supply. We were talking it was going to pay for itself in like eight years. So from from my perspective, I give almost zero cares about, you know, the dollar fifty or five bucks that this is gonna cost me per quarter to run instead of something that you know consumes a little bit less power um, tell me give me give me your thoughts then on Haswell E because like you said <coughs> you or I could have done an Ivy Bridge E review <laughs> a year ago easily so Haswell E do we already know the answer uh, I can probably put a lot of um you want to maybe want to watch the chat now on the right hand side because I think a lot of people may start to get a little bit angry with me but I don't think <laughs> essentially the reason why uh, Ivy Bridge E has taken so long to come out was because Intel hasn't got any competition um, so uh, they, they, they actively delayed it because uh, AMD didn't have really have anything to kind of uh, compete with it. It was very much like when the 680 come out. Uh, that was meant to have been a, uh, a much lower end card and kind of uh, essentially what happened is NVIDIA, um, they, they saw the, 770, the 7970 when that come out and they kind of went, oh, uh, that's not as good as we were expecting. And they kind of juggled all the product line around. And that was why when the 680 came out, it was, it was almost identical to the 7970. Because um, they kind of, I, I think the rumors were it was meant to have been originally the 760. And that was why the, um, uh, sorry, the, it was meant to have been the 660 Six, 660, that's it. Yeah, I'm getting all my numbers mixed up. It's too late. It's like quarter past one in the morning. <laughs> Um, but that was why the uh, 670 and the 660 had that much shorter PCB was because they were obviously, yeah. they were meant to have been much lower cards. Um, but yeah, obviously when uh, X79 first got released, I don't know whether a lot of your readers or even whether you were, you know, whether you know the, the kind of background behind all the motherboard and the chipset problems, um, but Intel changed the X79 chipset uh, and numerous times on the run-up to the, the CPUs being released because originally it was meant to have PCI Express 3. Originally it was meant to have USB 3 uh, all on the chipset and Intel kept running into problems and they kept changing it, which was why when the 2011 socket originally came out, loads of the motherboards, either they didn't have the full range out or like Gigabyte, they were still running around with really bad BIOSes and because stuff hadn't fully got tested so yeah. with this one where AMD didn't have you know really anything to compete with because even their silly um, five gigahertz chip still can't really compete with you know anything in the extreme sector of the Intel range even though you know the price is similar Intel just yeah, kind all of the prices drop now 
So I think it's not in all territories, but Intel slashed prices on those chips by like four hundred dollars or something stupid like I that. I know that was yeah, that was AMD, but I think yeah. pretty much that was because AMD. It was a very very good marketing strategy, because AMD put the prices out originally, and I I've spoken to retailers in the UK, and they they were still selling those extreme chips. Um, really? So they kind wow. of got in. Yeah, they kind of got in and got their money when they could before uh, Sandy Bridge E come out. And then they just slash the prices because <coughs> they know that they're, they're not going to, they're not going to sell them afterwards. And um, one of my right. friends, a very good friend of mine, is actually, actually works for AMD. And he said to me, we are not going to be sending those out for review at all. Because we know if a, 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 a decent reviewer gets hold of these, they're going to they're gonna cut them to bits and we're not going to sell any. And we just... It, it, it was, yeah, they just needed to get rid of them. It was just a, a classic AMD, oh, we're going to do this and hope the fanboys buy it. <sighs> I'm going to get in a lot of problems, aren't I? I'm going to wake up in the morning <laughs> to an absolute inbox full of complaints. But the reality of it is, I don't disagree with you at all. So for those of you who are watching and are, you know, like, uh, preparing your fingers to write angry letters to Tom, uh, the cold, hard truth of the matter is that those chips were never designed to run at those speeds. You look at the power consumption, those, the boards that go with those chips were never designed to deliver that kind of power. This platform was never intended to do this. It, it's not a real product. It's like, it's like if you were to pay AMD's engineers to come to your house and overclock your CPU for you. That's basically what you were paying for when you gave them your extra few hundred bucks. Yeah, when I, when I got my original, uh, I think it may have been, I'd have to check my videos, I think it was the 8350, the, the, the heat that that thing consumed, uh, sorry, created was insane. And they did make it slightly better with the, like, the newer variant. Um, but I, <laughs> at that point in time, I was still testing on an, an HD14 air cooler, and I did need two 220 CFM uh, uh, Panaflows, was it Panaflows? Uh, well, anyway, two 220 CFM fans. Two hair dryer fans, just to keep basically. the Noctua cool. <laughs> it, they were server spec fans. They, it was it was insane the amount of noise I was creating just because I had really pushed the overclocks on that chip. So when well, they brought out that five gigahertz CPU, I was just like, you would have to be fucking insane to spend that much money. On a, a, on a processor where the architecture is already kind of like, you know, 18 months or two years behind the stuff that Intel's given us, um, you know, even at the basic kind of extreme level, which for the matter, you said earlier, you didn't know what the E stands for. It most definitely is extreme. <laughs> ah, okay. Well, there you go. <laughs> So I'm going to throw something at you. This is totally unrelated because I want to move on to Broadwell pretty quick here. But um, <coughs> Are you telling so, me I'm talking too much, Linus? No, not at all. I'm just, I, this is hilarious, and I want to show it to the viewers who have never seen it before. So Tom was saying he needed to use some server spec fans on his NHD14. <laughs> um, Tom, is this before you came up with the concept of mounting more fans in order to get sub-ambient cooling? I already know what's coming. <laughs> <laughs> so guys, this is a little experiment with an H100, and uh, how many fans did you have on there, man? Uh, actually, that is um, that's a very early version, because there was uh, 20 fans on one side, I think if you count, you can see 10, yeah, and if you go a little bit further into the video, <laughs> we go completely crazy, and we put another 20 on the other side, so you may want to skip a little bit further in. There we go. <laughs> Um, essentially, what the idea with that was, is it was just to have a little bit of fun. Um, but I really did not uh, expect that, that, that that's quite literally the most popular video <laughs> I've ever made. Um, and I'm actually a little bit disappointed that the most popular video I've ever made is the one that was a complete and utter troll. Because... Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so obviously... viewers... Viewers, let me, let me just be really clear about this. Water cooling, no matter how amazing it is, if you're using the air around you to cool it, is essentially still air cooling. So you're still air cooling your CPU, sort of. You're water cooling the chip itself, 
then you're pumping that heat over to a much larger surface area than you could achieve by mounting it directly to the CPU, and then you're going to air cool that. So Tom in this troll video is all like, well, if I put more fans on it, then it'll be like, what did you claim it was like negative temperatures? Yeah, essentially, well, basically, um, we, we took a version of hardware monitor and we took it apart and basically any of the temperatures that were there. And if you go to the end of the video, because people still haven't seen this, if you go to the end of the video, there is a disclaimer. Just before people start trolling me, it, it was a bit of fun and it was always that way all along. But we took hardware monitor apart uh, and we basically told hardware monitor to make the temperatures. I can't remember whether it was 80 degrees below what it should have been or 140 degrees below what it should have been. So basically oh, we, we, we displayed these temperatures and they weren't exactly, you know, true. But at the end of the video, we did kind of admit it. But the, the, exactly, exactly that, that you mad to um, <laughs> it, it, Essentially, we just said because of the static pressure, um, it could create amazing ambient temperatures. And I really wasn't prepared for the amount of people that might believe it to the point that <laughs> there are videos on YouTube now where people have tried to replicate the results. And I kind of feel a little bit guilty. <laughs> No way, I've, is there actually? Yeah, I've had people send me links to videos and they're like, I can't get my, uh, my temperatures oh, to go below oh ambient. Um, but just oh so that God. your readers know, if you add a, uh, a second set of high-speed fans, so you've got push-pull and you add a, just another four fans on, not, you know, like 20 or 18 more, just another two fans on, I only managed to get one degree off. <laughs> oh so, like, man! A whole That's bunch awesome. more money in well, I'm sorry, man. I hate to dig up this sort of painful thing from your past, but no, uh, it's really just... good because it was it was a lot of fun. I just wasn't prepared for the amount of people that took it serious because <laughs> I did put a disclaimer at the end, and I, I mean, I'm going to look now just to kind of see on the analytics of the uh, of my channel which if your readers want to put www.oc3d.tv in, it will take them straight to my channel. But the Ultimate Corsair Cooling Mod has had 22,000 views in the last month. That's amazing. Those are such big numbers for a year, or for a, a video that is going to be one year old in 13 days. It's actually my most popular, it's either my number one or my number two most popular view uh, video of all time. And, uh, I'd kind of like it to have been one of the reviews, to be fair. Speaking um, of reviews, um, I'd love for you to take a moment before we jump into Broadwell, which will be our next topic, to tell the audience what you do, how they find you on the YouTubes, and what your channel's all about. Pimp it. Okay. Um, if we go right back to the very beginning, because I obviously started the channel when I was uh, in a shed, it literally in the middle of nowhere. It was a really, really bad camera, really, really bad lighting. Um, and it was just because uh, I couldn't, um, I, I wanted to start just making, uh, I, I what, used to watch Rodney Reynolds and I used to see the empty cases and the five minute reviews um, and I would watch one of them and I would find that I was uh, getting more questions at the end of the review than I was getting answers. So I just kind of wanted to, you know, do my own spin on it and go against the MTV generation, which was meant to have been three or four minute videos and then just kind of make my own really in-depth ones. And to be fair, I still, to this point, I know I could make, you know, because OC3D is a business now, do you know what I mean? And there's no, you can't get away from that fact. And you, you can't, you know, put me down because, you know, I need to make money now. I've obviously spent a lot of money trying to build this up and buy the website and stuff. But Believe it or not, I can relate. Essentially, from one kind of website owner to another, it's obviously you've you started with NCIX. I started working with OC3D, and then I had the opportunity to to buy it out, which was in December. But I've always stayed. I've always wanted to do that in-depth thing. And if you're going to buy a 550-pound graphics card like the 780, or you're going to spend you know a hundred pound or 200 pound on a case. Um, 
you can get the tight, you know, you can get the uh, compact details from a lot of other reviews, and there's nothing wrong with any of the other ones. Um, but if you want to know the ins and outs of a duck's bum and kind of see that kind of understanding of how they're put together and the, the engineering and the understanding about how much they cost to make, that's the kind of really niche area that I take, you know, that I kind of get. And it was one of the questions I was going to ask you, actually, because I always get people in my comments saying, uh, Tom, I really like your videos, but they're too long. Can you make shorter ones? Um, but can you honestly imagine me trying to squeeze? Let's take, OK, I did purposely go overboard on the 900D. I was video, about but... to say 900D. That was like an hour 45 or something like that. But he had, yeah, he had it the was, ramp up. That was, actually, the that was actually George from Corsair. He kind of said to me, we want to make it feature length. <laughs> and I, 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 did, I did go into more detail than I wanted to, to be fair. But can you imagine me trying to shrink that video down to 20 minutes? It just, I, I couldn't have got it all in. There was a lot to talk about. And to be fair, I could make another one at least another 30 minutes long about stuff that I didn't cover. And you know what? That's, I think this is, this is actually a great topic of conversation because uh, viewers will ask me why I don't do reviews. It's come up on the forum a few times. Linus, why don't you do, do reviews? And my answer is invariably unboxings and brief product overviews where it's here's the basics of what you need to know. Here's a nice close look at it so you know what you're getting, that you know what you're getting yourself into. That's what made us big. That's what has grown our business and our channel and our viewer base and that's what our viewers are telling us. They're clicking that button that says I like this. Um, this well, let's face it, Linus, you've reasons. got you've nearly got half a million subscribers. There's no way that you can get away from, you know, the success. And Exactly. The, the thing is with mine is I know I've got a very, very niche market, which is yes. why the amount of subscribers I've got, I'm still humbled by every month when I look to see how many more I've got. Um, but if I can help just a couple of people a month make an educated choice away from buying you know, one product, and then they might go, well, actually, I might not need that. I can buy this product. Then, as far as I'm concerned, my job's done. Because the channel was originally started as a form of therapy for me when my mum died. It was never you know, started as... Um, you know, a way to make money or, you know, buy a, you know, UK website out or anything like that. Um, right. And that's still the kind of angle that I take. Uh, and even that with my reviewers, they've all kind of, I'm not going to say change their opinions, but they've all, they've all kind of, you know, engineered the angles that they take on reviews to make sure that they give people, you know, a broader spectrum and lots and lots of information rather than trying to make it you know, really, really short and just say everything's amazing all the time. And that's the last part of my whole thing is why don't I do in-depth reviews? Well, because you can go watch Tom's or you can go read on on tech. Uh, there's there's a hundred other guys that are doing it better than we could with the limited time we have left after we're doing brief overviews of so much stuff. There's only so many hours in a day. And I think that's, you I think that's another thing that uh, a lot of people don't uh, appreciate with the work that we do is that, you know, stuff does take a long time. Um, I've seen the sheer amount of videos that you guys have put out and it's like, how do they get time to do all that? Because <laughs> I, I know my videos are a lot longer, so they take a lot more time to render and all that kind of stuff. But you do put a lot of content out. Um, but it's almost, <laughs> it's a, I tell you something. It's amazing that we're be, alive. <laughs> I'll Good. tell you something that would be quite interesting, Linus, would be for you to do a box opening and then for me to do the review directly after and us both upload the video. So there's a challenge for you. We should try that at some point. We should try that as a cross-promotional thing. It's like, look, we're, I mean, our motherboard overviews, we don't put a CPU in the board. I, you know, I, I got to be upfront about that. We're not going to do that. Um, However, if, you, if you're just looking at specs, you don't need to. No. So we can cover the basics, and then I can be like, yo, if you really want to know in more detail how far it overclocked with this particular CPU or whatever else, Tom's got a video over there. He doesn't have to worry as much about glam footage of this or specs that and can point people my way. I don't see a problem with that. 
or you could actually, you could do like the intro version of the review and I could do the end version of the review and we could upload the same one. Like for argument's sake, if Corsair were to release a new case, which I'm pretty sure you're aware is pretty soon, you could do your intro, I could do my review, we could both send each other each other's um, footage and we could upload the same thing. Tell you what, why don't we do that as a collab? Well, hypothetically, if there was a case coming. Spoiler alert. Hypothetically, I think we both know there are, and my Skype has just gone ape shit. So, yeah, I'm going to get in trouble in the morning. <laughs> the best right, bit about so it is, um... is uh, oh, sorry, go on, I, you're probably going to save me from getting into trouble. Or would you like me to get into trouble? Go for it. Okay. Uh, in my uh, 350D video, I did correctly name the upcoming model for the next course air case, and it's actually behind me, and it's very good. Oh, man. There we go. I wasn't saying that. I was pointing at who was saying that. Um, <laughs> all right, let's I move into our... I didn't break NDA. I didn't say anything. Let's move into our last topic here, guys. So this was submitted by Skits9417 on the forum, and the basic news is the 22 nanometer Haswell processors have only been available to buy since June this year, but the focus is already shifting to Intel's next generations of chips and chipsets, 9 series chipsets and Broadwell processors. So Intel's moving to 14 nanometer, and basically it's going to be LGA1150, however, new motherboard anyway. No backwards compatibility. Your thoughts? Do you, okay, do you know why they're doing it? Well, probably for much the same reason as every other time they've done it. And this is something I wanted to get into. So for those of you viewers who aren't aware of this, um, a socket change does not equal an electrical change. So when AMD was going through that insanity of 939 to AM. 2 to A2 plus and 3 plus and FM, whatever it is. When AMD had a bajillion sockets going on, 1207 on the server side, um, people were kind of pointing at Intel going, oh, well, Intel had LGA775 forever. Why can't AMD have a, a long-lasting socket like that? Wrong! 775 went through several electrical changes that prevented previous boards from working with upcoming CPUs. I mean, just because it's the same socket doesn't mean it's the same thing. So, okay, so Broadwell. Uh, okay, uh, with 775, uh, I've got to admit, <laughs> I have run the entire range of 775 CPUs from pretty much like P65 upwards. When they, when they changed the chipsets, they were adding stuff on and this was kind of the old TikTok version of what Intel used to do like the P35 only used to have a limited amount of PCI Express lanes but if you went up to X38 that was when you could then go into Crossfire whereas with now they've kind of separated those uh, parts into completely different sockets. Um, this is very much a rumor that I've heard from uh, motherboard manufacturers I have heard that Intel have kind of admitted that the problems that they've had with Haswell and the heat that they generated is because for the first time ever, they moved the voltage regulator onto the CPU. Um, and uh, because of that, I had heard that Intel were going to take the voltage regulator off again because they wanted to drop that TDP back down because people were having such problems keeping them cool. Like with, you know, if you, when you've done your own tests, um, uh, if you use OCCT, you've only got to hit that AVX compatible mode and you'll get, an, you know, go from an acceptable 70 degrees temp up to a 95 or 100 degrees temp just because of the amount of extra stress it puts on the CPU. And that also in, you know, in tow means more power requirements. And I really had so, to wonder what they were thinking. Sorry, uh, uh, just really briefly, because... You talk to someone like an NVIDIA with their implementation of GPU Boost 2.0 where they kind of went, well, what kills chips? Voltage and heat and time. And if you can reduce any one of those factors, you can make your chip last longer. And what Intel went and did here is they increased heat. <laughs> So, so they say they took one of those pillars of CPU reliability and like we're like sledgehammering the bottom of it for no apparent reason. Your thoughts? 
Uh, actually, uh, when Intel did that, what they also did was they, uh, they really put a very hardcore throttle in, in place as well. So if uh, you're running your overclocks and you hit that, which is a 100 degree threshold, if you know, any of your users out there want to you know, go and try it, the CPU will get to about 100 or 102 degrees because it's always within a percentage of the, the reader that you're using on your desktop it will then throttle back massively and your temps will drop back to about 60, 70 degrees and then it will eventually go back up again. Um, and what we do need to remember is Haswell, uh, Ivy Bridge and uh, Sandy Bridge, they essentially, when they changed over from the 1366 chipset, they made this a lot easier for beginners to use because uh, you'll remember with 1366, we had a lot of base clock options. Yes. So in fact, that's one of my most popular videos ever was my LGA 1366 overclocking guide because it was complicated and it was totally different from anything we'd ever seen before. Uh, yeah, exactly. And uh, the problem was is uh, the 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 users that were buying the 1366 socket were running into issues whereas they where they were buying like a memory kit and they couldn't get it to run it rated because uh, the XMP profiles back then they weren't that strong and generally if you wanted to get your RAM to run it rated you would need to do a, you know a little bit of overclocking and that did mean you know balancing the difference between your base <laughs> clock and your memory strap to get your memory timings um, and then if you got your RAM running at rated and then you tried to overclock a little bit more, uh, you'd start getting to the point where, you know, nothing was stable because your, your RAM was starting to run out of spec. So when they introduced Sandy Bridge and that very, very limited base clock where you had 100 to the start to start with and you could only normally get like 103 or 104 out of it. Um, yeah. everything that the reviewers were telling you was to leave the base clock alone because you've got that tie-in with 1600, 1866 and 2133 memory and that whole reason that Intel went across was to make it easier for a very big, you know, a, a learner or a beginner or someone that's not really had these type of systems before to be able to just go in and go actually I just want to run XMP and it worked. And it was the, you know, it was the right. first time really that they'd had, you know, near enough a hundred percent success ratio, that you could buy, you know, an, uh, a decent uh, memory kit and it would run. It was only the real extreme end of, you know, when you started getting to twenty one thirty three and beyond, that it would come down to how lucky you got with your CPU. So, I actually think it was a very clever move with Intel. So do you see moving the, the VRM on board as just an extension of that strategy of making it easier for the beginner then, but then it just kind of didn't work out? Um, I, I, I'm honestly not sure what Intel were trying to do with that. I think it was probably to try and make maybe motherboards cheaper because the, the voltage regulator on the motherboard was so much bigger and it did help to keep prices down. I mean. And, and another thing that we need to keep about is it didn't need such a big voltage regulator anymore because Haswell <coughs> didn't store as much power. Um, the video that you did about the Gigabyte Z87i ITX board versus the Maxima 6 Extreme, the reason why the overclocks were the same was because the CPUs don't need as much yep. power anymore. And this is, I get, I get this a kick is, out of it. Z87 boards with multiple CPU power connectors <laughs> yeah exactly they just you're never cool. gonna get to that point pretty much every board out there if you're gonna run even up to like dry ice you're gonna get to the point where the, the CPU is gonna stop before the motherboard does yeah. um, and, and that's just because you know the CPUs are so power efficient now that even a basic motherboard with just a handful of phases can keep a decent overclock um, right. uh, just because I know that, you know, the Asus panel on my Skype is flashing at the moment. And to be fair, there is quite a few of them there having a go at me. If you do have more power phases, long term, the board is likely to last a little bit longer. Um, and you may have a slightly more stable overclock long term. 
But this is right. one of the reasons why uh, I kind of went with the, the middle ground. And I say that the, the Gigabyte uh, M5 and the MSI GD65 Gaming, they're both £150 in the UK. They are more than anyone is really going to want. And you don't, if you want to spend more money than that, um, it's not about, you know, the overclocking that you can get or the frames per second that you can get for spending more money. It really does just come down to uh, the, the looks of the board and possibly the features that you get as well, which, yeah. as I'm sure you're perfectly aware, for a reviewer, if all the boards perform the same, how are you meant to review it? Because yes. you're, trying to, you're trying to sell a product, which is a very personal choice. So yes. we, we kind of have to go, rather than it being an easier thing to review, we've now suddenly got to give a lot more details so that people can go, actually, yes, you know, that is a very good feature that I need to be purchasing. Uh, yeah. I don't need that, but I may need this, and they need to go and look for it. Absolutely. All right. Well, I think we're going to have to let you go. Thank you very much for joining us. We really appreciate you taking the time. And uh, I hope you guys in, who are viewing also enjoyed us having Tiny Tom on. So, guys, just as Can a Can I reminder, just say one more thing? Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, if your uh, viewers want to go to the OC3D website, we are giving away a 780. Uh, and I will give away uh, an exclusive kind of little bit of a hint or a tip live on the WAN show, and I'm not going to post this on the forums, but I will say that the, uh, the image that you're looking for is in something related to Gigabyte. All right. That is a good tip. All right. Thank you very much. And guys, uh, give our guest a warm sort of thank you in the Twitch chat because it sounds like he's checking it out. And uh, we'll talk to you soon, man. Cheers, dude. Thank you very much. Take care. See you later. Bye-bye. All right. <coughs> so without further ado, let's head into our next topic here, which is going to be... Da, 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 da. Ah, yes. A couple of Kindle news items this week. So I actually ordered one of these. I don't know if... Uh, here, I'm just going to... Yep, there you go. I don't know if I told you this, but I ordered... Oh, okay. Well, this is a different link now. It has actually... It has actually changed. Um, yeah, no, that doesn't matter. We're good. Uh, so I was looking for... Where's the other link? Oh, here it is. Okay, so they have a new paper white, which is using a new display technology. I know that that's not exactly the same kind of, you know, hardcore tech that we usually focus on on this <laughs> show. But, what, oh, for crying out loud. Okay, well, whatever. The new paper white. Paper white. And then I think the first listing is, like, the old one or something stupid. Oh, no, there it is. There it is. So it's the new Kindle paper white. So... Next generation screen. So they're using what they're calling here. We're just going to go back to. This is their one where the light bounces across. Yes. Right. So it's the new e ink Pearl 2 display. So what this achieves is much brighter whites, much darker blacks, and effectively higher contrast. Because. 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 Because that's how. Inherently that. <laughs> Because that's how contrast works. <laughs> um, and then they've also increased the display density. So it's 216 pixels per inch, which might not sound that great, but you're not... I mean, you're looking at fonts that are going to be... Yeah, it's not like full-colored photos. and It's, it's, ma well, yes. okay. it's mainly book text. Yeah. Like, it'll be fine. Mainly book text. Uh, they've increased the frequency from 800 megahertz to 1 gigahertz, added more accurate touch... Um, they've made some improvements to the battery, so they're claiming you can get anywhere from, I think it's like four to eight weeks, depending on which model you're looking That's at. Awesome. Now, this is where things start to get interesting. Oh, there's some more software and stuff. It starts around 120 or 140 bucks or something like that. Sure. This might not even be the right product page. 120 bucks. Oh, 120 bucks with special offers. So that's what I paid for it. Cool. Um, but this is where things get really interesting. <coughs> when are we going to see this go everywhere? They are selling a version that has an always-on 3G connection that you do not pay for. Yeah, I bet you didn't know this. Okay, so how this works, and I have no idea how they're supporting this, but I'm thinking maybe what Amazon has done is they've worked out an agreement with like every carrier everywhere to have 3G coverage on the paper white so that whether you're in the States, there shouldn't be any roaming because it's not your plan. 
So there must just be like a Kindle plan that's tied into the wireless radios on all these devices that could work anywhere. So you can't just browse your, your internet. Yeah, I was going to yeah, say, you no don't one, have that. Did I say browse your internet? You did. That was awesome. Was pretty, pretty cool. Yeah, uh, but you can't just browse your email. You can't browse the internet. You can't do that. But you can get books, but right? But you can buy. Yeah. From Amazon. You can buy books. So they probably, the they probably have a minor profit sharing thing going on. Smartest thing ever? That's brilliant. I, I did not know that. Like, that's brilliant. like that's the, the smartest thing ever. Is like, what does always on and connected everywhere even really mean? We were down in Seattle, and because of oh. the horrendous costs of roaming with data or text or phone, I mean, we were effectively cut off from the world for four days. Yeah, it was. It was. Um, <coughs> sorry, it was forty dollars to get a like plan for me. To Basic. Go through my company up here, I had to pay them forty bucks to try and get a plan over the border. So it's like, no. Yeah, ridiculous. Whereas this is the smartest thing ever. I mean, uh, hey, Brandon. Brandon. He's got his headphones on. Do you want me to go get it? He has his headphones on. Um, no, it's okay. I'll get him. Anyway, talk about why this is smart. Because it works everywhere. <clears throat> because no roaming. Brandon. Um, he basically just said all of why it's smart. But the idea that I came up with, which is a possibility of how this works, is the profit sharing thing. Because somehow... Amazon has to be paying for this. They have to be supported in some way because they're the only ones actually benefiting from this. So if, if they're paying for it out of pocket or if it's a profit sharing thing, they're keeping it just to purchases. That's why profit sharing makes sense. Is this it? What? No, it's not. Oh, it's this thing. Yes. He has small hands. So he's, yes. So he's very excited. Oh, I'm so stoked. Uh, mini. Get open it, get open it. Oh, I'm not even on camera. No. Like, missing all the exciting, like... An unboxer who unboxes things off of camera. I know, right? Brilliant. Never mind, I wanted you to get the door, smart guy. Uh, That's okay. I, I got it. it. <laughs> you probably just heard you running around screaming. Oh, is that the one mini? One mini. Okay. I love how they always send it to you in little shopping bags. I know, right? So, like, as if I shopped for it. Yeah. But, uh, I am so stoked. If you guys have been watching me for any amount of time, uh, you'll know. I love my HTC One. Um, did have an eval device for a Samsung Galaxy S4. So yeah, better battery. Yeah, some cool gestures and stuff. But I, you know, as a as a previous Apple Apple user, you know, I was like, oh, I miss that quality. You know, like that that sexiness. Which, speaking of which, I mean, we're pretty much done with the Kindle thing, right? <laughs> sure. Um, yeah, I'm done with it. I think there was one other thing. Something, something, something. Right. Matchbook rewards loyal Amazon customers for past, present, and future orders of physical books by offering digital ones on the cheap. That's actually so like 99 cents to free. like three bucks or even free. So if you've been an, a loyal Amazon customer for like 10 years buying all your physical books, boom, pick up a Kindle Paperwhite and you can like get copies of the books you've already bought on the cheap. Really Amazing. Cheap, yeah. Now, if they really wanted to take over the world, they could offer like a trade-in program. Where you like Hello. send in your books, convert your entire library to Kindle books, and then they have you as a customer for life. Because your entire library will be on Kindle. So if Amazon's watching, I'm not as smart as you, but sometimes I have good ideas. Um, okay, so HTC One is here. I got a Verizon phone, which means HTC that one mini. Uh, hopefully that means that I'm not going to have, did I say one? Oh, I got a 32 gig one. Yay. I thought it was 16 gig only. And I, have, said one. I haven't actually looked at it since uh, like the early rumors. So, <laughs> wait, what? What is this? This is a one. Did they send the wrong thing? Yeah, this is a 4.7 inch 1080p. Okay, well, troll. I don't even know why this is here. Troll, I'll take it. No, I should probably let them know that they sent the uh, wrong thing. That's what should actually happen, especially nah, since we're live nah, right now. It's okay. Finding out that the wrong thing is here. I think the Verizon phone might be kind of glitchy as balls, though, because uh, my wife's phone is a Verizon Droid DNA, and that one's, like, like still photo, like is photo it, messages. Is it because you're on Bell? Don't work. Um, oh, I have no idea. But it's... it's uh, anyway. Okay, well, scratch all that. Fine, then we'll talk <coughs> about Amazon's matchbook thing more. It's great. So you can get books. <laughs> this has been the, so, the most random conversation about anything I think we've ever had. Well, okay. Random as in like jumping off topic and back on topic and explaining everything in two sentences and then jumping back to it. Not random as in we end up talking about like 
football field fights with remote control. That was awesome. That though. was awesome. You shouldn't you shouldn't question the awesomeness of that. Um, so anyway, Amazon Amazon's amazing, and um, <sighs> yeah, that's part, kind of it. They're like the smartest people ever. They're just gonna take over the world. Like we should just all stop giving them our money if we don't want them to completely own every interesting corner thing of the is universe. that big giant companies um, that were super open, like Google. Google's closing down every door ever. That's as true. As fast as they possibly can. That's and true. And it's not... It does look that way. I shouldn't say that's true, allegedly. It yeah, looks it, that it way. Yeah, it looks that way. Um, and they're having some problems. But then Amazon is like, yeah, we sell stuff. So we're just going to give you all these options to buy things. So they're opening doors, but they don't have to open the doors that a company like Google would have to open. So it doesn't create other problems, like how Google right. wants to close them now. So they're just opening all the doors. Buy anything, any way you possibly can, and we'll take all your money. And we'll take all your money, and we don't even really care if we make money on it right now. Amazon Prime, yeah, whatever. We'll you know, make money on it later. No problem, man. Just, if you'll buy enough stuff, and then it'll work out somehow, I don't know. Somehow. Like, uh... Amazon's just crazy, because they're so big and it just doesn't matter yeah it doesn't matter that like like nothing really matters just because they're so ridiculously massive they can do pretty much whatever they want I've had quite a few people ask me about my new notebook um, guys this is an XPS 12 from Dell um, I've had a lot of people ask why I'm using it and the straightforward answer is that Acer wanted their S7 back to which I said no to which they said yeah and so I sent it back and um, so Intel sent me this Dell which is an Ultrabook, which is better than my old notebook, <coughs> and it turns into a tablet, which the funny thing about it, actually I'm going to do a video about this later, because it's part of the, like, okay, we're going to send you this notebook, you have to, like, make some kind of video about it. That's the requirement. Just something? Talk about it. I'm like, okay. And I'm, like, looking at the other people they seeded units to, and I'm like, these people have, like, 200 followers on Instagram. Like, what was the process for figuring out, like, who's getting a notebook? And I didn't ask that because it seemed rude, but um, the point is they sent me one. Basically, I'm supposed to talk about it. One thing I will talk about now is that I did not expect myself to use the flippy screen thing, um, but I've actually found myself using it. And it feels nice. Feels really good. Sounds good. Um, I've actually used it in tablet mode. It's much too heavy to be an actual tablet. It's more like just from a convenience standpoint, I'll flip it into tablet mode if I'm like on the can and just you know, reading a website or something like that, and uh, that's that's what I do with it. So, there'll be a longer version of that later. And somehow that'll justify sending one to me. Um, <laughs> Samsung's Galaxy Gear unveiled at their Unpacked 2 event. So this was posted on the forum by Mursu, and uh, actually he or she did a great job of fleshing out the entire thread here, so you guys should definitely check it out. Remember that we do post our document on the forum after the show, so you can browse through all of the articles that we're looking at. But if you want, there's a bunch of other sources down here at the bottom, including Mashable and BBC. So let's discuss that. How much, how much have you looked into Galaxy Gear so far? I was almost instantaneously not interested, and then almost instantaneously interested in the Qualcomm one. All right, so we'll start with Galaxy Gear, then we will talk about the Qualcomm talk. Should we bring up right it. away why I wasn't interested almost yes. immediately? Yes, let's start with why, okay, why don't we start with why you weren't interested, go, and I'll talk about why I don't care. Compatibility issues. It doesn't work with, like, anything. It only works with Samsung stuff, and even out of the Samsung stuff range, it only works with, like, what, two or three phones? Uh, it works with the Note 3 and the Tab 10.1 at launch. However... It should be noted that Samsung has come forth and said, look, we know, that's a problem. It's not their usual rigmarole where they're like, nope, it works with only these because ha 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 Where they do that a lot. I mean, yeah. it's even something like the original Tab 10.1, you had to get a, uh, a 3G oh. version for it to work with their all share play. All share play. I was just going to bring up all share play. And I'm just like, what? <laughs> you got a bit so, so, sorry. Uh, your Wi Fi technology only works on a 3G tablet? Are you, are you kidding what? me? Um, so that's the kind of thing I'm used to seeing them do. But this is not that. What they're saying is it actually has to do with the low power Bluetooth 4.0 implementation that enables the watch or wearable or whatever you want to call it. I mean, what do we even. The gear. It enables the gear to communicate constantly with the phone in your pocket. So the gear is not a standalone device at all. 
It's a $300 phone companion. Now they showed off a lot of really cool stuff, but let's get into why I don't care at all. One day battery life is not good enough for something I wear at all, period. And you can justify it all you want, but in much the same way that Google Glass is not ready and Google understands that it's not ready and they just have Explorer program and they don't actually expect people to buy one as a finished product, Samsung needs to understand that one, one day is not ready. I don't want to go to bed and have a power bar worth of uh, micro USB like wall chargers. That so I there's like your tablet, everything. your tablet, Nvidia Shield, Shield, phone, your phone? watch. Um, my, like, I might have an exercise bracelet thing that are booming right now. Or, like, or, you know, uh, exercise socks that are all, like... Also booming Pedometer, right big deal right now. Like, oh Like, my you're goodness. gonna... Okay, you know what? Okay, Ikea, if you're watching. Next generation wardrobe, okay? So it's a little thing where basically you, like, hang your clothes. Like, in much... Instead of hanging your clothes sideways, it goes in the other way, and then we all standardize on where the plugs for your clothing go in, and then one side of this cabinet is just like USB ports. Or it can, okay? Well, all the hooks could be um, near fields power charging. And speaking of uh, wireless charging, Gear does not wirelessly charge. The Qualcomm one. Does. The Qual. Okay, we're talking about the Qualcomm one the later. The Qualcomm one's awesome. I know. <laughs> it's so awesome. Okay, so it doesn't wirelessly charge. That is a deal breaker. One day battery life, no wireless charge. How can I get in the habit of using something that uh, will just like it'll never be on? And if it's a one day charge now. What are we talking about a year from now, two years from now? Oh, well, Samsung's going to expect you, I don't know, buy the Note 4 and the Gear 2. Like, I don't yeah, know. Yeah. Um, with that said, Samsung's working, okay, and that and as a fashion accessory, I'm not really sold. Um, Anon Tech, if you guys don't already know, I'm a huge Anon fanboy. Like, that fanboy out pretty hard. Yeah. Um, anyway, Anon was basically saying, well, it's big, but it doesn't feel like, you know, like a watch watch. It doesn't feel like a classy piece of, you know, fashion accessory. It feels like a really small phone on my wrist. And Samsung doesn't want to talk about it that way. But then they go and they, they build, like, a speaker and microphone into it so you can hold your <laughs> wrist up to your ear and you can talk like that. I'm like, why did you even make it a phone? Realistically, why did you make it a phone? We already have Bluetooth earpieces. And Samsung's like, well, we don't want you talking to nobody like those things. So we came up with this idea. And I'm just like, okay, so now I can look like I don't understand that there's no phone in my hand. And, uh, and that'll be totally normal at some point, or it won't, or something. I don't think this will ever look I don't cool think that'll ever, I don't think that. Because, like, what is this? And, like, the thing about a phone is you can put it on speakerphone, you can switch hands, you can kind of look just like dirt down at it and stuff. Yeah. Like, I, like, yeah, I know, right? It's like, <laughs> okay, well, you know, my left ear, I don't hear too well in that ear, but I wear a watch yeah. on my I mean, okay, we're teasing them right now, but the reality of it is, is it's going to get better, and there are some really, really cool things that they're doing. So Samsung's whole thing with the S4 was a lot more gestures and a lot more motion control. So one thing they showed off was, oh, okay, you're previewing a text on your gear, and you're like, oh, that's important. You pull your tab, uh, your Note 3 out of your pocket, that email or text is already on the screen. Because it's all like, yeah, the, I'm being taken out of the pocket so I can check it. I'm like, okay, that's cool. That's pretty cool. Gear has a camera, which is 1.9 megapixel, but who cares because megapixels are not important. The quality I'm not expecting to be very great. However, it's neat that it's one swipe, take a picture, and it's on your wrist at all times. Okay, it has a Cortex-A9, which to me is sort of indicative of the sort of not specifically engineered processor that went into it. Could we have gotten two days of battery life out of it using a more efficient screen dis uh, the, technology? This is why I pulled this out, is because the whole one day battery life thing, how long is that actually going to be one day? This phone now, consistently over S3. the last few days, S3, 100% at 9.30 in the morning, 10% at 4 p.m. Right. I'm and using it quite a bit right now, like a lot, but still, Yeah. what the heck? Yep. That will not last me close to a full day. That won't last me a full work day, let alone a full day. So, yeah, I mean, uh, <sighs> okay, hold on, let's, let's keep going, let's keep going. When I tuned in, the, uh, the unveiling had about 100,000 views. So, I mean, there's, that's not as many as I expected, but no. it shows that there's a lot of interest yeah, still. Yeah, but there's, there's also a lot of interest because, not necessarily well, because people are going to buy it. And they were unveiling Note 3 as well. 
Okay. And next gen tab 10.1. Okay. Anyway. Um, okay, heavily gesture dependent interface. Obvious uses. Okay. Why would, Why am... I'm going to buy a wearable. Actually, I pre-ordered a Pebble. So I don't know when it's going to ship, but I ordered a Pebble. Uh, why a wearable? Um, well, for me, the biggest thing is I get a ton of emails and texts. So if I can be like, is this important? Yes or no? It'll save my wife from yelling at me about constantly having my phone out if I can check if something matters before I actually have to commit to using a bigger screen. Yeah. Do I think that I am at any point going to use my wrist to talk to reply to a text message? I'm not much of a voice control guy. Maybe my son will be all about the voice control because it'll be a completely different paradigm. Whereas for me, it, I'm probably still faster if I pop the phone out of my pocket if it's intelligent enough to go, you know, bloop, load that up on my phone, and I can be typing as soon as I get it out of my pocket, that's still going to be more efficient for me. Um, but I will get a wearable just so that I can preview things, because that's awesome. Um, Samsung expects there to be a lot of development of additional apps. They're expecting to open up compatibility to others of their phones, as well as third-party phones. They were talking about that already, which is a huge step forward again for their attitude, which at times in the past I haven't really liked, which is if you don't own the matching generation of Samsung ecosystem, the latest TV, the latest uh, phone, watch, you know, uh, butt plug, whatever it is that they have, like... You can't all share play with your butt plug if you don't have all the other things. I don't know that I would share a butt plug anyway, but you could play with it. <laughs> anyway, um, let's move on. To the... To the... Yes, to Qualcomm's entry into the smartwatch game. I was expecting you to go somewhere else. No, no, I think we had gone quite far. Well, that, the there. Oculus one. Oculus butt plug? No. Oh, oh, that game. No, yeah. no, no. We'll we'll do this first because okay. we've been talking about smartwatches quite a bit here. Sure. So Guns Cool posted on the forum. Great job. He's got uh, two articles this week. The focus today may be at the Galaxy Gear, but <clears throat> none other than Qualcomm is entering the smartwatch market with a device they're calling the Talk. So they're targeting <coughs> the same price point, which is around $300. Oh. So there you go, guys. A smartwatch is, it's been decided by the powers that be. 300 bucks. They cost $300, yeah. so there you go. Um, so they're going to be using a different display technology. So their Mirasol Low Energy Display Tech, they're claiming is going to help deliver three to five days per charge. Boom. Owned. Uh, there is going to be no platform dependency. So text reminders, uh, music control. This is something that I'd talk to That's you awesome. about. That's awesome. Yeah. It's like I was thinking, you know what someone should have built two or three years ago? is just like a little Bluetooth thing with like Velcro on the back that you can like stick to your, your dash in your car or like somewhere so that you can use it to control the output of your phone. Just control your music player. Basically like um, an Apple TV remote, except like smaller and Bluetooth. Because you're not, you're not allowed whipping out your phone while yes. you're driving, but you are allowed to change the song. And like on my motorbike, I have speakers in my helmet so that I can use my GPS or I can listen to music while I'm riding, but still hear what's going on around me. So if I just had a little like thing that I could stick to the front of my bike or whatever, obviously I can't reach into my phone to skip a track. And because the... Uh, the standards for like one button navigation are such a cluster hump whether you're using an iOS or Android device or whatever else that's not feasible so something like that would have been great boom smartwatch so I can just be like you know bloop or whatever when I'm out of traffic light so cool love it yep. um, likely won't have the same amazing integration that gears offering like whipping out your phone and having it already looking at the email you were previewing which is amazing and cool but after okay so but yeah, it's going to be limited edition and it has wireless charging. Cool. It's like, okay, another furniture idea. Ikea, I hope you're watching, okay? Bedside table, nightstand, wireless the, charging the surface. The whole top of it. On the whole top? Boom. Billion dollar idea. You know how they sell those, like, you, you, you buy the table, but then you can buy the glass top? Yes. Just have it so you buy the table and you can buy the like wireless charging top. Because that's Ikea's whole thing is like, yes, you can Modularity. get the small length table with the like, you know, top. Like, I, I, don't, I can't make fun of Swedish. I don't even know enough Swedish to tease Swedish people. But like, <laughs> oh man, that's going to be amazing. So you get home, you know, you strip down, you take off your watch, your phone, your, your keys. I mean, by that time, your keys will probably be battery powered, so you can just wave them in front of your door and be like, I shall pass. You can with some. Yeah, well, there you go. So all that stuff can just recharge itself. I mean, even things like car fobs, 
for unlocking your car. All of a sudden, they could be way more advanced because everyone would go home, drop them on their bedside table, and they could charge. So they could work from like three kilometers away and be like high powered, you know, bloop, bloop, I'm over here. Well, come get me, come those, get me. They have that sm uh, smartphone. This is a, a slightly off topic, but I don't remember who it is. I think it's Ford. Has a smartphone app for, I think, one of their cars now. One of their consumer grade cars where you can lock it from wherever. That's awesome. You can lock it, unlock it, do whatever from wherever. So if you walk away from your car and you're like, oh crap, did I forget to lock it? You can just press the lock button and it'll be like, car locked. Yep, I vote for that. Alright, so uh, I think that pretty much covers. So, yeah, limited edition, so I have no idea what that means exactly. I guess what it's they're. It's probably like limited to 50. 500,000 units or something. Or maybe it's limited. Maybe it's like a reference design that they're just like, yo dogs, hey, make some of these things so we can sell you our chips and put them in it. We don't actually yeah. want to be a, a smartwatch maker. We just yeah. want to build all the chips that go in all of them. Guys, go get on this because you're sitting around waiting for Samsung to release gear, Apple to release. I'm extremely excited about iWatch. I actually haven't been excited about an Apple thing in a while, but if well, their integration is tighter and better than what Samsung can do, which in, look the, better too. which in the past is like, oh, and Apple's so good at the premium feel. Yeah. Oh, like, exactly. If, it'll look better and it'll feel better. If they nail it, I might go back to iOS. Really? Yeah. Yeah, mm, yeah Chris, it probably wouldn't really integrate with other things. Yeah. Mm. So let's see. Things are going to be heating up. This is expected to be like an umpteen billion dollar industry by like 2016 I'm or something sure like that. It will be. So until they can completely get rid of them. Yeah. Whatever the heck that is. It's very exciting. So let's go back to Linus's screen. Submitted by Nick Trance on the forum. This is Nokia's uh, latest mm. sort of shot at Google. So uh, apparently they're people. Samsung. Uh, did I say, uh, well, no, Google. Oh, well, both, I guess. <laughs> Mainly Samsung, but... It could be Google. Have a break. Have a, you know... Well, okay, okay. How about you and I can debate who we think this is a shot at? The point <laughs> is, uh, they took to Twitter to uh, put out this little have a break, have a broken in half phone in much the same sort of style as the old KitKat ads. Have a break, have a, give me a break, give me a break, break me off the piece, piece of that KitKat bar. And then there's another thing here. This is actually, I think this one's actually really funny. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and zoom in for you guys. Check this out. Uh, <clears throat> so this is a Samsung Galaxy camera, uh, or Galaxy S4 rather, whatever it is, Samsung Galaxy, whatever. The only smartphone with 10 times op optical zoom, yeah, whatever this thing is. Uh, still, it didn't see this coming. So they've got the Lumia 1020 with its 41 megapixel camera over there, kind of going like, oh yeah, you know, what's up? What's up? Come at me, bro. <laughs> um, so, okay, I'll give, give your take on it first. They're going after Samsung because... There's a Samsung phone snapped in half. Okay. And they're a phone manufacturer. Okay. And they're showing another company's phone snapped in half. Okay. You probably could snap an S4 in half like that. You probably could. Right. So that's kind of a thing. Yeah, don't try. You could probably snap an S3 in half like that as well. <laughs> Please don't try. Um, <laughs> Just flex. Okay, I'm, I'm, calling it a, I'm calling it a shot at Google. I think they're doing a shot at both. Because there's like... Yeah, I, like I, I don't think it's about I don't think it's about the device at all. I think they just picked the most popular one, and we're just like, you know what? Uh, well, I, I mean, because they're kind of both. They're kind of software and hardware now after the acquisition. So, okay, I thought that was going to be more of an argument than it ended up being. <laughs> well, they're they're obviously going after both. I just think considering Samsung's branding, it's is like, like right there, quite specifically on it, and like almost the whole photo is a broken in half device. They could have blurred it. Yeah, and they did. They decided not, not to. Not at all. <laughs> so that's why I was like, wow, that's pretty anti Samsung. But right. it's definitely both. Good bike posts on the forum. Surface Pro 2 is <clears throat> a go. So the main highlights of Surface Pro 2 are Haswell processor. So if you guys were, were tuned in when we had Tiny Tom on earlier, Haswell definitely does improve at least one thing, and that is power consumption, yeah. unless you're overclocking. <laughs> Um, and heat output. So Surface Pro 2, is this the magic, is this the magic bullet? I, I, t I, back when we were talking about Surface a lot, back when it first came out, yes. we both said that we were waiting for more high revisions. I've liked the Surface idea, I think, more than you, because I like the idea of being able to have I my really desktop liked it. apps. No, I really liked it. For me, the whole thing was a tablet with a keyboard and Office. Cause yeah, my but I like the Surface Pro idea more than Surface RT. Okay, yes, um, and the problem, my only problem with Surface Pro was that it was heavy and bulky and, and it was basically an Ultrabook. I mean, by the time you could buy yourself an Aspire S7, 
which was just this thin. Remember the S711 yeah, inch first that's gen? That's a good point. Yeah. Why do I want a Surface? This has an actual keyboard on it yeah. versus touch cover and type cover, both of which were usable. But they weren't great experiences. I really didn't like touch cover. At all. And type cover was not great either. Not great, but at touch all. cover was bleh. I preferred touch cover just because it was like There's thinner. no feedback at all. But again, if I was going type cover, I'd go for something way better. Yeah, yep. So anyway, okay, we both agreed that Surface wasn't there yet. Um, and Surface RT, I still think, is just a total disaster. Because for me, the point is is being able to run Office and being able to install whatever I want. And I think at the time, you were worried about development tools yep. running on it. Yeah. Like, it's got to be x86 or forget it. Yeah. Um, so I'm still excited about Surface Pro 2. So it's Haswell. It's got 8 gigs of RAM now. It has a new multi-position kickstand. So the original kickstand was like here or here. And it had a very satisfying click, and that was great. But now it's going to have more positions, so you can put it at more angles. And there's the also going to be an RT... Two angles. Two angles. One that'll like mimic a kind of laptop style, so it'll feel like you're using a laptop, and another one that's better used for uneven surfaces. So um, it's going to have seven hour battery life, which is way better. Like, way better. That was the other problem with Surface As Pro well. is like, who cares because yeah. it's irrelevant because yeah. it lasts for like three hours on battery. So, with all of that said, my iPad sits in the corner and I don't use it. Um, I've switched completely to the S7 when I was actually using my iPad a lot before I got it. And then after the S7 was... was <clears throat> Ripped from your yeah. cold, dying hands. Clutched. Not dead, but... Grasped from my... You know, anyway. Uh, when that was torn away from me, I have switched to using this completely. If I need a tablet, I use this. I don't use my iPad. Um, first Surface Pro 2 is extremely appealing to me because it's even more tablety, but... Better power consumption, blah, yeah. blah, blah. And more, way more flexibility than something like an iPad. I'm interested to see what iOS 7 does for iPad. I mean, uh, Apple has an event coming up in, I think, four days where they're expected yeah. to unveil cheapo iPhone, iOS 7, and a whole bunch of junk. So um, expect I, me to be on Twitter, like, hardcore. you know, hardcore ripping on everything they're doing. Actually, I don't know. I might like it. Depend yeah, it depends what it is. Yeah, we'll see. I, yeah, I'm still not sold on tablets. I'm, I'm more excited for that one, but I just still want a real keyboard and a real touchpad. And... But would you, would you, okay, now having used that Vizio notebook that we have, would you buy a notebook that doesn't have a touchscreen anymore? I never used it. You never used the touchscreen? I don't care. Oh, all right, forget it. Right, you were, you had a mouse and keyboard plugged into it too. Yeah. Didn't you? Okay, that makes a difference. Um, both Edsel and I are pretty sold on touchscreen. Like, I use touchscreen a lot on my notebook. It's now. cool. And if I was in school, I think I would use it a lot more. Right. But when I was, I was just typing a lot, and the keyboard on that thing sucks. So I put in another keyboard, meaning I'm even further away from the screen. Right. So to touch the screen, I'm like, bleh, all the time. So it's not that usable. All right. So speaking of things that are not that usable, if you are an average person who is not particularly... Uh, talented when it comes to you know making websites and whatever else and again i apologize <coughs> our lower third is kind of kind of incorrect down mm. there and uh i am very very sorry about that edsel's supposed to send me a corrected one so uh squarespace.com slash linus for a free trial and of course you can use offer code linus9 to get 20 percent off on new accounts so what squarespace does is they sponsor the WAN show which we are very very thankful for and they also allow you to easily and quickly create your own web 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 space so it's, it's like I've, I've completely, completely taken over my mind. Um, anyway, they allow you to easily and quickly create your own website, which you can customize to no small degree. So they actually corrected me on something I said last week, was I think I said that the advanced mode, where you can dive right into the CSS and all of the, all the back-end stuff, I had said it was somewhat limited. Apparently, it's really not that limited, and you can kind of tinker with it however you want. Wow. Um, so we actually created the updated Linus Media group.com website using Squarespace. It was way, way simpler than using WordPress, which is what we were using before. So you can actually browse on there. It's fully functional and you can make changes on the fly. Uh, Edsel was able to do it. Did he need any help from you? Uh, I had, no, not really. Not creating the website and design and everything. He did that all on his own. Yeah, okay, so uh, basically you can check out sort of our roster, you can get in touch with us, although I don't actually know that we monitor that. You can see our shows, one of which you're actually watching right now. So the whole idea behind Squarespace is it's supposed to take that whole concept of like, 
uh, a template for making your own website and make it end up looking beautiful by the time you're done with it, even if you don't really know anything about it. So it'll work at various resolutions, whether it's on the desktop or a laptop or a tablet or even a smartphone without you really having to intervene in any way. They've got a lot of backend stuff that you can play around with, such as being able to take payments very easily if you wanted to build a small web store, uh, whether it's to sell your own stuff or whether it's like uh, Unbox Therapy, actually. I think... Uh, I think he's doing a Squarespace thing right now as well. So Lou from Unbox Therapy, who was a guest a little while ago. Yeah, there you go. So we can check out Lou's website where he's got a few different things. So here's his trusted gear, which I think links to his Amazon affiliate link. And um, so the idea is being able to make something that looks like a real website and is accessible to everyone very quickly, very easily. It starts at, I think it's like $8 a month or something like that. So it's not terribly expensive, especially considering that it includes the hosting as well. And of course, if you use da, 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 offer code Linus9, then you can get 20% off for the month of September on your first purchase. So squarespace.com, offer code Linus9. Guys, do check it out. We do recommend it. And we are actually switching over to a paid subscription with them because I'll feel better about recommending it to y'all if we're actually paying for it. And yeah, it's definitely saved us, saved us time and hassle. Because if you guys ever did check out the linusmediagroup.com website, you might have noticed it was down all the time because we were just hosting it out of a server that was over at NCIX in some was, room that apparently doesn't need power. And the motherboard. <laughs> and networking, and like, oh man. And, and the motherboard. And the shelf for it to be on, and the motherboard doesn't boot anymore, and... Anyway, the old way is dead. So, long live, long live this new way of doing Good things. Good riddance, old way. <laughs> Good riddance, old way. <laughs> that stupid setup. Oh, God. Uh, speaking of the old way... <clears throat> Ooh, this is, this is interesting. Mm -hmm. Google's oh. Trojan horse, how Chrome apps will finally take on Windows. So this was an article from The Verge, who I love. Um, go, go to The Verge every day and then you won't even have to watch The WAN Show because... Stop saying that. Last time you said you won't have to go to the forum. This time you said you won't have to go to the... What are you trying to do? Why don't you just go work for them? <laughs> No. <laughs> because we're more fun. There. That's why you should tune into the WAN show every week. Because The Verge wouldn't talk about USB butt plugs. Um, so C Google is introducing an all-new Chrome app experience where the idea is that real computer applications that are just meant to be run on your computer, not even inside a Chrome browser, would be coded in the same way as a Chrome app. So think about that for a second. This will do two things. Number one is the hope is that it will allow developers to develop using their ecosystem. So they'll be able to presumably easily and in such a way that it is pleasing for both them and their end users, create these applications. And number two, and they'll, they'll run on you know anything that can run a Chrome browser. So it'll make the OS not matter, which would then make Chrome OS, OS matter a lot more. A thing. And make it so that Google can control every application ever created. They really are just going to take over the world, aren't they? They're going to try. It's like... That whole thing from... This was bigger a few years back, actually, but the people were like, oh, what is the closest thing to God? Because God is all-knowing. They're like, Google, because you can search whatever you want. It's supposed to be a big joke thing, whatever. Right. They're like, they're trying to control literally the whole planet. They're actually trying to be that. It's getting kind of nuts. And as they're doing it, they're closing more doors, which is scary to me, personally. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, you know what, guys? Hit me, Twitter Blitz. So you can talk about Chrome OS and Chrome apps and give your thoughts about this, or you can just ask a general Q&A question. We are going to do a Twitter Blitz uh, very soon here. So we're going to move on. Well, let's do two more topics, and then uh, let's, let's move on to that. So Galaxy Note 3 moves to a USB 3.0 micro connector. This was submitted on the forum by that one kid, and uh, Slick's giving it the thumbs up. I'm giving it the big thumbs down. Why? Big thumbs down. Well, okay, you wanted something else. Oh, I wanted something else. But are you still happy My... that they're at least moving? No, because in my experience, so anyway, this uh, original, compatible. original article was from VR Zone. I don't care. Okay, so <laughs> here's the problem, is that USB 3 micro is actually just more pins in that craptastic connector. Yep. That's all it but is. But it seems to secure better in my 
experience? In my experience, I've broken the only one that I've had so far. Oh, really? So, and my other experience is talking to Angelbird about their external SSDs and how even with the highest end, highest end micro USB connector, they were getting like 250 plugs out of it. So now let's talk about your one day been, battery Okay, life. wait, 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 wait. I've been wondering about that for a while because you keep on bringing up the Angel Bird data. Yes. But we don't have one, we don't have the Angel Bird data. That's true, Two, but what I do I've have is done, my broken connector. I have done way more than 250 plugs on the same cable with micro USB and never had a problem. Okay. So I would really like this Angel Bird data to be in print before we keep on saying it every single time we ever talk fine. about cables. Fine, fine. Okay, let's say double that because, I, okay, fine. How about this? Let's do this. Okay, my wife's phone, Galaxy One, whatever that was called, Galaxy Vibrant. Um, Broke within two years. Micro USB connector, unusable. Didn't particularly abuse it, plugged it in once a day. Um, okay, that thing over there, whatever that is, that USB 3 hub. Okay. Okay, that one survived about 10 connections. So that's a USB 3 but micro. But that thing was pretty shy hold on, when hold it on. showed up. Um, I also have an external hard drive, one of those GoFlex uh, connectors that go on the back. That one's dead. That one survived about 30 plugs. Um, but that one you jammed into your bag, did that's, you not? No, not that one. Oh, okay. It's a different dead one. Okay. Uh, so my experience so far with USB 3 Micro is not any better than USB 2 Micro. I don't have much experience with it, just it felt more solid. And I think we can both agree that USB 2 Micro is a big steaming pile oh, of poo. Oh, it's terrible. So here's something I want to know. Why were they not working on a locking connector? And speaking of which, so USB 3 Micro, okay, I'm done with that topic for now. Speaking of which... HDMI, why have they not been working on a locking connector? Unfreaking believable. I mean, we've had locking connectors since what? Serial? Yeah. Like, I mean, how far back do we have to go until we find when people hadn't yet figured out that putting a screw or a lock or something in place was a good idea? So I, I'm excited for the other advances, but I do when I when I realized there was no changes in like the the style, I was pretty disappointed. And you know what? I, I don't I don't see um, I don't see interoperability as an excuse because there's no reason why they couldn't have expanded the standard to have an optional lock. Oh, definitely. So they could have had lockable devices and non-lockable devices. You could have just gone the way. Uh, Duh. The the Display Port does it. Yes. It's so simple. It's so simple. Or they even could have had like like a weird thing that goes off to the side for all I care, and then on the back of larger devices like TVs or cameras or things where it's likely to be a problem on the back of a video card, there could be that optional thing, yeah. and then you'd still maintain backwards compatibility with the older cables. Unbelievable to me because HDMI is a terrible connector. Mini HDMI is an even worse connector, oh. and Micro HDMI is slightly not as bad as Mini HDMI, but definitely worse than full-size <laughs> HDMI, and I hate them all, and they can all just die in a fire. Linus Rage at Cables tips. Yeah, I'm like, I'm so mad. I'm like, I'm just so mad about this. I don't care as much about the phone, because you can still use the old cable, so either nothing changed, or you can use one more cable. But I would have liked to see them change styles completely. That would have been a lot better. I mean, I think wireless charging is going to make this a non-issue very yeah, soon, particularly soon. on the phone side. Quite soon. Um, so I'm, I'm ready to get over that. But I mean, look at how long we were stuck with HDMI 1.x. So that means we're going to be stuck with this stupid non-locking connector. everyone's going to use it because it's HDMI. Yeah. That's basically um, good enough for today and nothing more than that because we already have 4K TVs. It's not like, it's not like they're building in headroom. DisplayPort, three years ago, had support for 17.28 gigabit per second data rates. Had an auxiliary channel, had audio channel this, had all that stuff. And HDMI is like catching up. Where's my future display interface? Do you want to revise to 2.1 and sell me a new cable? Do you want to do this? Do you want to do that? 2.1a, 2.1b. Come on, guys. <laughs> you had three years to be like, oh, someone has um, a different standard that like might be better. So, it's HDMI. Uh, it's cheap as poop. <sighs> no, DisplayPort's cheaper to implement than HDMI. What? DisplayPort is royalty free. HDMI costs money. Per like, what have they been doing with all the money? <laughs> 
That's a good point. I forgot about that. Actually. So anyway, it's an 18 gigabit per second data rate, which is, I mean, it's relevant, but it's not the be all and end all because the standards that go behind it are actually more important in some ways. You, you can buy the cables for HDMI cheaper than DisplayPort, can you not? Uh, no, I don't think so. Really? Like, only because they're more common. Yeah. Like they, they don't actually cost any more or less to make. No, but you can buy them. You can get DPs pretty cheap now. Head over to like Monoprice or whatever. Okay, yeah, okay. They're, they're cheap. Because they were not cheap when I was looking for no. them. No. Uh, okay, so 18 gigabit per second. 60 FPS, 4K. So I'm looking at that going, really? That's my future display standard? Where's my 120 FPS, 4K? Where's my 3D 4K <laughs> with like full non-compressed frames? Because That's the next revision, there will be another revision. You know it. So there gonna be so there will be like some stupid frame packing thing or something stupid point like two, that. Point two B, whatever. Okay. So so I mean, get this. I mean, okay. So maybe you don't care about 3D. What if you care about uh, screen sharing in multiplayer games? What if you want to play a two-player game? where you actually use polarized glasses to each see a different image and you don't want to play at 30 FPS. What about that? What if you want to actually have what we've been taking for granted on the PC for like, <coughs> what, 10 years? 15 years? I don't yeah. even know how far back you have to go to find a display that doesn't run at at least 60 hertz. Um, so so console, uh, console gamers, I mean, aside from the fact that none of their next-gen consoles are going to run at Man. 4K anyway, um, they're going to be stuck in the dark ages like now, and then they're going to be stuck in the dark ages when even when they get a console uh, refresh because HDMI, which is what all these consoles are going to use for output, is not even going to support the frame rates that they would need to, I mean, to output to multiple. I mean, what if they had actually had the bandwidth available to work into an HDMI one point what, or two point whatever, so you could run multiple displays on a console? Like, like all these things that they could have done. I know this is just going to sound like you know an uneducated rant, but why not? Why couldn't they have done this? HDMI is just so accepted. How many? If you go randomly out on the street and you go, hey, do you know what an HDMI cable is? I know. Everyone, everyone will say yes. I wasn't even expecting to be this mad about this on the WAN show today, but like, I'm just this mad. Um, so it supports 32 channel sound. So the idea is that I guess if you were watching content at 1080p or playing content at 1080p, um, 60 FPS 4K would be about equivalent to four separate streams at 60 FPS 1080p. So if you wanted to have like multiple people, you know, playing a racing game all on the same screen, if we can get like 240 hertz screens and like crazy stuff going on. Um, it supports 32 channels of sound, so everyone can have their own sound channels. Um, I mean, that whole thing is both cool and scary to me because the idea of everyone sitting around the TV and that being Listen. considered family time yeah. is scary enough. The idea of everyone sitting around the TV watching a completely different program. And even listening to different audio. Yeah, like little Johnny is like playing his Wii U and like little Sally is browsing uh, the smart TV or like using a Chromecast to like play games on mylittlepony.com and dad's watching, you know, Grindhouse and mom's watching, I don't know, whatever, some show that women watch that is good. <laughs> I, I, I don't know, like I'm generalizing here. None of these generalizations are necessarily the case. I mean, dad could be on mylittlepony.com. We know this is a thing, so <laughs> there you go. Um, that is even scarier to me than any of this other stuff. So dual video streams for multiple users, so apparently not four video streams, but it, again, bandwidth-wise, why couldn't they have done it? Yeah. And uh, multi-stream audio, as many as four users at once. Support for 21 by 9 widescreen displays. I don't care about that on the desktop. I don't care about that. But I think I might care about that for a TV. Really? Yeah, because movies are actually shot that way. Whereas, like, games, like, they look all weird and fisheye when you do that. Yeah, but it's gonna look so weird anyways. Because it's like... Mm. You watched it at the movie theater. Yeah, and you sit way the freak back. Well, yeah, but if you're sitting far enough away and you have, like, a nice big display... That what, are you going to, be... like, cut holes through your whole house? Well, I'm not going to buy house? one. No, you're not, which is why it doesn't matter and you don't actually care. Yeah, but I don't buy anything. What's the last thing I bought? But you get given it, and you won't be given I... one of these. Well, okay, I don't get any, I don't get any sample TVs. For you, those... get, you get screens. Screens, sometimes, not very often. We have a few screens, right? We do have a few. We do have a few monitors, but we haven't... Okay, anyway. Um... <laughs> I think that's pretty much all I have to say about that, as Forrest Gump would say. We're actually up to two hours right now, so we're going to do that Twitter blitz. And uh, I have some forum announcements that we like, have he's to He's going to do the forum thing, and then we're going to call that a night, <laughs> I think. We've actually got a lot more topics. We could... Oh, no. First, let's make sure we didn't miss any of our call-out topics. So, IVE, Broadwell, 
Microsoft Galaxy Gear. Like we're okay, good. we're good. Yeah. All the topics we promised to cover. You know what? Let's do a quick blitz of things. So BlackBerry is going to be sold by November. Um, okay, whoever didn't see this one coming. Sony's going to release a VR headset, but it apparently is like not very comfortable and not that great. Okay. But read the article. It's on the, the Verge. It'll be. The Verge. It'll be on the. Uh, it'll be on the uh, WAN doc, which will be in the Linus News and Rambling section of the forum later tonight. Uh, soccer. Oh, actually, okay. I do want to talk about this. So this is an article from CBC.ca, which is um, like Canada's you know news thing that we have. Um, so to ensure, <laughs> to ensure every child wins, the Ontario Athletic Association removes the ball from soccer. And I'm actually just going to read the whole article because it's awesome. With the growing concern over the effects of competition in youth sports programs, this summer many Canadian soccer associations eliminated the concept of keeping score. This is a thing. This is real, okay? The Soccer Association of Mid Lake Ontario, however, has taken this idea one step further and have completely removed the ball from all youth soccer games and practices. According to association spokesperson Helen Dabney Coyle, by removing the ball it's absolutely impossible to say this team won and this team lost or this child is better at soccer than that child. We want our children to grow up in learning that sport is not about competition, rather it's about using your imagination. If you imagine you're good at soccer, then you are. This summer, Peter Oldring spent time with the Midlake Thundercats, an under-11 boys and girls team, and put together this radio documentary. <laughs> okay, so it's a joke, but the scary thing is that it's really believable. Is that you weren't sure for a while? Yeah, because and when I read this, I was like, "Wait, this is CBC." The whole not keeping score thing is a real thing, yep. which is ridiculous. Because yep. by the time you're ten, you know how to count. And it's not like the kids aren't keeping track. Even when I was a kid, like, this existed. No, me too. To a certain extent. And, like, you know, you, after the game, my dad would be like, who won? I'd be like, we won. It was 7-5. to five. And the coach would be like, oh, we don't keep score. I'm like, well, I was keeping score. Yeah, we, we, I got a goal. We'd even have games. <laughs> what would happen a lot, too, is if you started winning by too much or if you started losing by too much, whatever, they would stop keeping score. But then all the kids knew anyway. Yes. And all the parents knew anyway. Everyone knew. So it doesn't matter. Everyone knew it like was It doesn't up. actually help. So we found out that Microsoft uh, didn't want Heavy Rain, which is winning a ton of awards and going to be a super exciting PS4 exclusive because of the child abduction plotline. Um, I mean, to me, this is kind of an extreme case of keeping um, sort of inappropriate content off of a console because it's not like Microsoft is going to get judged for what a game developer releases by, by sort of you know, people who aren't ridiculous. Um, it's happened, though. It, it's happened. But, like, we're not talking about those, like, straight pornographic games yeah. that existed for early consoles. Like the Japanese uh, trail rape or whatever it's called? Whatever that was called. Like, there was, called. there was stuff that was, that was like, bad. Yeah. And one of Nintendo's big things was family-friendly... Um, yeah. Family-friendly Famicom. Okay, so this is good for all ages, and they, they tightly controlled who could release games on their platform. But to me, this is, like... <laughs> I mean, child abduction is a real thing, whereas, like, walking around in the desert with, like, a ginormous erection, like, shooting at things is not. Um, so I, I wonder how many people are going to get that reference. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't it's know. It's a pretty old reference. Yeah, it's a thing, it's, though. That's it. That is an actual reference. I'm not making this up. No, he's not. Um, I, I, I completely agree with you, although I do also understand where they were coming from. I, I think they should have gone the angle that you went, which is where it's not that out there, and if you put a high enough rating on it, it's fine. Yeah. I don't, it should have been fine. And now they're just giving away sales to, <coughs> to the PlayStation 4. Um, okay, so Twitter Blitz time. Boom, boom. Here we go. 163 interactions. I love you guys. Thank you for tuning in. You guys are awesome. I feel like lots of tech companies have given up on innovation because they know people will buy it anyway. You know what? That's... Oh, I'm not, I don't care. I don't want to get too far into this. But this is one of the things that I really dislike about some companies. Samsung comes to mind where it's like it doesn't seem to matter if the new features on their new product like do anything or work because people just buy it anyway. One thing, I don't even care because there will always be that one group that's pushing really hard. Self-driving cars. There are certain companies that have switched to 30% self-driving vehicles already. Wow. There's some like mining company, 30% of their trucks are all self-driving. And like there's there's Oculus Rift and like there is a lot of innovation. Technology right now is exploding. But, but certain companies just certain yes. are not doing anything. It, yes. It's yeah. Just just pay attention to who's doing stuff. That matters. Will last generation GPUs struggle with DirectX 12 based games? Really depends. <clears throat> We've seen this go either way in the past. If I imagine I'm a millionaire, it doesn't mean I'm a millionaire. You're right. 
Oculus Rift is going to blow away everything. We won't even need monitors anymore. Disagree. Disagree. <laughs> what is cheap but a good motherboard for the new Intel has well CPUs? I think Tiny Tom Logan covered it perfectly. MSI's gaming board is a great choice. Comes with onboard killer ne networking, comes with a decent sound card. If I was really going to go balls to the walls, I'd probably grab a Maximus 6 formula or even something lower end like from their channel series, but then throw a great sound card on it. Are you ever thinking of coming to the UK? No, not really. Not specifically the UK, but um, if everything kind of falls in line, Brandon and I might be going to Gamescom next year. Well, we'll see. I want no to. promises. I want see, to. now you're making me like commit in public. Come on, you got it. You can do it. Uh, okay, I'll tell you what. Fine, you'll go. Yes. All right. Yes. Uh, James, I hope you can watch the show too. Uh, <clears throat> this is that is a fake program. It's none of it is true. I think he's probably talking about um, the soccer thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know. Just recently I started moving my contacts onto my Google Cloud, so the benefits of Google Sync make it worth it for me. I don't remember what question I asked anymore, but cool. Uh, what's your favorite GTX 780 aftermarket model? Well, Asus has been the only one for a long time with a truly custom PCB model, so I would go with them. However, MSI has the Lightning now, which I haven't checked out yet, but we have one coming. I don't oh, know cool. if I told you that cool. yet. Cool. Um, Galaxy has a really cool looking one. Actually, I should probably ping them. Oh. Find out if we can get our hands on it. Is it another white one? It look no, I don't think it's white, oh, but it's like, like but it's those. pretty balls to the walls. Okay, cool. Uh, I love your show. Thank <clears> you. <throat> also, my crush lives near you. Okay. <laughs> Ghost says, have you considered that wireless charging and Wi-Fi data transfer will slowly become the new norm? No more broken connectors? Definitely have considered. Definitely, definitely love it, as long as I don't get too much cancer. Uh, <laughs> Linus, look, it's a meme. Okay, I'm afraid to click that. Sorry, man. Yeah. Uh, how do I install the program during the Windows installation so I can install Windows 8 Start Menu from a clean install? That's a really long answer. It is possible, though, because you can inject things into But it's ISOs. more work than it's worth. It's a lot of work. Just install one after you're done. Yeah. Uh, first time watching live. Hello! Is there an after party today? No, I have to go home and make dinner for my wife. One quick second, I want to jump back to that thing. Even if you're doing big office deployments, if you get Ninite Pro, you can distribute Classic Start across your whole network. Yeah, Ninite. Uh, they don't sponsor the WAN show, but they should because we love them and we'll talk about them every week if, if, they, if they don't sponsor Ninite's us. Ninite's like my favorite thing it's like ever. Things we love. Ninite, Noctua. Um, what do we love as much as Ninite and Noctua? Ninite and Noctua. I... Okay. Um, <laughs> what happened to Build Logs? Coming. Coming soon on this yeah, today's this stream. show. Sorry about the previous weeks. I won't switch to Chrome OS as my primary. Android, maybe. But Windows has legacy compatibility. And what do you mean by closing doors? Good question. Uh, they're just becoming a lot less open about their policies and the way that they develop new technologies. Um, they're, they're becoming a bit more walled garden, I guess, if you sort of look that term up. Which, like, That's a thing. not even necessarily that walled garden compared to some companies, but extremely walled garden compared to the old Google. What do you think of two 5x4 screens for gaming? I think that's terrible. Yeah. There are huge issues with signal integrity transmitting ultra-high frequency data over meters of copper. Yes, that's true. However, fine then. Intel came up with an idea. Well, let's just make active cables part of the standard. Okay. Done. Do that then. There's activation Fine. The cables. Fine. Build a next generation technology. You know what? Even make HDMI 2.0. You know, active or not active. Red mirror. I mean, we even have active cables for HDMI. We have a 50 foot HDMI 1.4 cable or whatever. That... Look up red mirror cables. Yeah, red mirror cables are awesome. Freaking awesome. Um, anyway, the point is there has to be a way to yeah figure that out. So there. Will DisplayPort ever be updated? No idea. Do you think games will be able to make their way in the Chrome browser? Of course they will. They already have been. I would say Flash games, but I don't even know what all those games run on anymore now that Flash isn't a thing. Yeah. Um, how about that Sonic incident at PAX? Is that you? <laughs> yeah, we're not going to talk about that. Uh, need a personal rig update? Yes. Apparently I need to talk more when there are guests, and probably you do too. You know what? It depends, because I don't mind if the guest is really knowledgeable and is talking about something that we don't really have that much to contribute to in, it, in addition to what they're saying. Um, and there's always going to be finding that balance. We're pretty new to the whole hosting guests on the show yeah. thing. And three people is an interesting balance, and this week at least I was actually trying not to because my throat hurts quite a bit. 
Yeah, if you notice he hasn't said much, and it seems like I'm just kind of talking about everything, that's out of respect, not the other way around. I don't want him to talk because uh, I don't want to get sick, so he can just keep his, like, germ factory inside his mouth. Um, will you do an unboxing of the 780 Lightning? Yes. What is your opinion of the current state of the internet in the UK? Uh, <laughs> we, we don't know a lot. Of we, we don't follow it that closely. I know there was a whole thing with censorship a little while ago. Don't know if that's going through or not going through. Um, so sorry, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay hands off on that one. What is my honest opinion of Razer? Are they overpriced or do you pay for quality? Personally, I love Razer, hashtag Linus butt plug. Um, <laughs> it's funny you should ask that because I don't necessarily have an opinion, like an all-encompassing opinion of pretty much any company. I form my opinions based on the product at hand. In fact, I ranted about this last week. Don't be a fanboy. Don't be an Intel fanboy, don't be a Microsoft fanboy, don't be a Google fanboy, and don't be a Razer fanboy, don't be any kind of fanboy. Evaluate the product for your needs. When, when, previously, when we were like, Night and Noctua, it's because every product that Noctua has come up with so far is ugly as hell and works really, really well. Yeah, and <laughs> we, I mean, and Night Night is just amazing and we use it all the time and it's perfect. The only thing that's wrong with Night Night right now actually is it has some problems with server revocation so you have to turn that off and you just turn it back on, it's fine. Okay, so anyway, um, don't be a fanboy. Does Razer have products that I think are absolutely fantastic? Yes. The Orb Weaver is an unbelievably cool product. If you wanted uh, like a gamepad, like, a, like the older Nostromo from Belkin or whatever else, buy an Orb Weaver. It's not that much more expensive than anything else. Full mechanical Cherry MX Blue switches Awesome product. Vibrant LED backlighting, anything you could want. The one thing I could complain about, I guess, is it doesn't have a braided cord. And I have cats, so they are. Uh, they kill cords. Um, something like the Aatrox. Yeah. Outstanding product. Yeah. Great build quality, great attention to detail, targets a market of people who want that product, and delivers. Great it's product. Solid. It feels really Blade solid. 14, unbelievable product. It's amazing that two generations into building notebooks, they turned that around. Look yeah, how long the first one was we we weren't huge fans of the first one, but I mean look how long Acer's had to come out with Blade 14. And Razor's like, no, we're just gonna build this. Um, do I think it's perfect? No. In fact, in my unboxing, I talked a lot about how I really don't like the screen they used. There. Um, so what's my honest opinion is I'll evaluate every product as it comes down the pipe. And that's what you should do too. All right, I think we're gonna call that uh, good enough. Oh no, there's one more tweet. Ah, uh, yeah. Stroke Dad Ego. Love the show. Thank you. <laughs> and now let's move into uh, your thing here. <clears throat> okay, so let me get the doc open. I have uh, some... You can just use this. Here. I've got it. I've got it. I've got it. I've got it. Yeah, but you can screen share with them. Just use this. Just, it's, it, just open the... Uh, you want me to open this doc? Yeah. Okay. It's, it's the build logs of the week. All right. Build logs of the week. So you got to download it. Yeah, I'm the downloading... <clears throat> oh, my PowerPoint on this computer... Oh dear. Uh oh. This is this is a pretty new pretty pretty new PC. Uh, like that might actually be a problem. Is there? A yes, Yay. I have it. Whew. Woo! That would have been awesome. All right, so back to the desktop. Middle of the week, September sixth. Uh, okay. Uh, what? Oh, uh, try, try, try. No, try. no, 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 no. I know what's wrong. I know what's wrong because it's it's defaulting to the wrong edition of Office. I just have to open with uh -oh. Office to the other one. Yeah. Uh, oh, I see. Oh, 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 no, no. Okay. Well, oh, no. Why don't you just... Oh, 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 oh. Okay, so one thing that I want to propose, and this is the first time you're hearing this as well, actually. Okay. Um, Actually, no, I'm going to take that back until I build a system so that we can actually do it. And then once I build the system... So you're not going to talk about it now. Nope. Teaser. You have got to Boom. be kidding me. Everyone's wondering what it is now. Anyways, there's a thread on the forum that we can't blast right now, but we'll be blasting soon. I'll blast through Twitter. Um, but this is... I've been meaning to call this out for a long time, but we've been having a lot of problems with the show for a long time. <laughs> and I haven't been able to blast it out for a long time. So there's a section in, I believe, Build Logs. No, build planning. That's what I'm actually pretty sure it's in. Um, where this, uh, what's the user's name? Here we go. Corn on a Jacob. Awesome. <laughs> uh, Corn on a Jacob in new builds and planning. 
basically proposes a challenge and what you're supposed to do is theorycraft a build for a specific purpose at a specific price point and then he chooses winners. Um, as far as I know there's no real bonus for winning but it's fun, it's kind of interesting. You don't have to actually build the rig, you just kind of theorycraft the rig. Uh, I think the kind of rules are that you use PC part picker because it's just a lot easier for everyone to see what you're actually picking. Right. Which makes sense. Um, but if you want to compete, if you think you have better ideas than other people, um, check out this thread. It's called the LTT Build Off Thread No Building Required by Corn on Jacob in the New Builds and Planning section. And it's just kind of cool. I've been meaning to. Uh, it's pinned, so it'll be right at the top. I've been meaning to call this out for a while, and I told him I would call it out quite a while ago. So hopefully, hopefully you've got that. Um, but yeah. Okay. Okay, well, apparently having two, two different editions of Office open is kind of a problem. So we're going to have uh, low-color low depth build logs of the week this week, unfortunately. Uh, so let's go ahead and start with Half X Mod by Indie Yet. So first thing you'll notice is some super cool mounted SSDs. Love that. Which is just awesome. I love how he did that. Right there. Right, on, right angle connectors right through the side. Really nice cables. Blah, 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 but then you oh, scroll down. It looks so terrible. Oh, what? I'll just, I'll open it oh, on here. Oh, because, okay, yeah. I'll open it on here, and then we'll just, um, yeah, we'll just, we'll just make it. Yeah, because the, the picture looks a lot better than that. Yeah, that looks so terrible. bad. All right, here we go. So we're just going to go, we'll just go full screen on here, and, uh, no, I would not like to do that. You have PowerPoint on this computer. Yes, I do. There you go. Yes, I do. <laughs> All right, here we go. Right. No, no, there's some serious glare. Okay, whoa, let's whoa, remove. Whoa. Add. Whoa. Add screen vision. Ah, ah, there we go. Whoa. Yes. All right. Boom. So there's some pretty Much hardcore better. glare, but he's got a window in there. There you go. So window. If you didn't notice already that you can see through the side, there is a window on there. Yeah, dim angled fittings look really sharp. It looks like it's not filled yet, but uh, I'm guessing you have other slides that show that off a little bit better. Love nickel plated blocks. Those are gorgeous blocks. What are those? Uh, I did not actually specifically grab that. I yep. probably should have. That, that hard really pipe. Uh, that hard too pipe right there. By mesmerized by his SSD mounting. All right, so there's another shot of it. Now it's uh, at least the res is full. That's kind of interesting because these tubes are sort of. Oh, I guess it's uh, red it's... plexi res. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. All right. So I'm guessing those are EK blocks based on that. That's an EK CPU block, and unless you're kind of an EK fanboy, I can't think of another reason to use an EK CPU block. <laughs> wow. All right. Shots fired. Connect this server one, by MG2R. This one is freaking fantastic. No this way. is this is where he started. So there's, there's one shot before this where he only has two hard drives in, but basically this is where the whole thing begins, is he's like, okay, I'm going to build a hard drive cage. And then he has to build off that because this has to be a full computer. <laughs> this is where it ends. So he just keeps adding little areas and mounting things in here. And if you notice, he's got a big freaking CPU cooler and he had to add a graphics card, so he's got an extension cable. And he just built a little hang off the side thing. There's a better shot from for it if you go forward. I got one more picture for this one. I should have done three pictures for the last one as well. Um, That's so, yeah. ridiculous. He decided he had to put a video card in, so he just like built a little like thing. It's, there's a little like PCI Express extension and there's a thing here and then it like sits there. Unbelievable. That's awesome. It's so cool. Love it. It's just awesome. Absolutely love it. That's hilarious. All right. <laughs> What else you got here? So, so check out the check out the theory crafting thing. Check out those build uh, build logs of the week. Those will be in the featured build logs of the week section that is pinned in build logs at the very top by Windspeed. Those will be there at some point. Um, also, I'm going to be putting up a thread fairly soon asking you guys whether or not you think we should have a gaming specific channel. Or whether or not we should keep the gaming content that you, the style of gaming content you saw at PAX, and our future ideas for gaming content on the Linus Tectives channel. So if we should have one giant channel that does absolutely everything, or if we should have another because we have a few already. Bearing channels. in mind, my devil's advocate thing here is another channel to maintain is another channel to maintain. It's another set of assets, whether it's pre rolls or intros or outros or 
whatever else. Um, it's another thing for people to be subscribed to and to follow along with. It's another, you know, um, yeah, I see a lot of challenges with having another channel, but if you guys feel very strongly about not having gaming content on the Linus Tech Tips channel, then it's something we could potentially look into. Because, I mean, the reason for Tech Quickie versus Linus Tech Tips, the reason that exists is because I wanted to keep, like, paid commercials... Paid content off of the Linus Tech Tips channel. Yeah. Yeah. Um, whereas none of this would be paid content anyway. So, guys, we'll, we'll ultimately, what I told him, because I think he believes that a, better, a, diff, a new channel would be better, what I told him is let's let y'all decide. Yep, so I'm going to be putting up a post on the forum, and we will have it go to vote, because this is ultimately your guys' decision. Um, speaking of the forum, the Linus Tech Tips forum is now in the 96th overall position for Folding at Home. Top 100, even though it's only been running for less than a year. And that being said, there's teams that are ancient and... By, to show that off, we have, we're in ninth position for active folders. Yeah. Ninth. That's crazy. That's nuts. <laughs> so we have almost 1,000 team members, 250-ish of with are actually active. And the Boink team is 372nd worldwide, which is actually quite good as well, and has 95 members with 54 active. And badges will be distributed to Boink and folding members uh, once you hit certain milestones. If you're more interested, there's posts about that. And if you're wondering why you're not getting a badge, feel free to PM Whaler underscore 99 on the forum. So thank you guys very much for tuning in to this week's WAN show. Um, I think that's about it. Tune in next week at approximately this time. Well, I'm going to go drink some tea. Approximately two hours and 20 minutes ago. This was a long show. It was. Uh, you know what? I'd love to hear... Yeah, hit me up on Twitter after the show here. This is just sort of a random aside. Let me know what you think the optimal length for the WAN show is. I'd love to hear what you guys think. Um, no, I wanted to call it... Uh, or whatever you came up with, but... Yeah. Oh, and if you think it would make sense for us to start doing a much shorter, like I'm thinking like 15, 20 minutes, like two to three topics tops. But... Um, and it would have a different name, which I don't want to reveal yet. Okay. Until we've launched it. That's why it. I didn't say But uh, let me know what you guys think. You know, do you like the one once per week long thing? Or would you like it to be split up? Or would you like a hybrid model of both of them? Let, let me know what you think. Hit me up on Twitter. I can't promise to reply to all the tweets, but I, I will read them all. So, good night, everybody. Good night, guys. Reminder, guys, that squarespace.com, offer code Linus9, and it's 20% off new accounts. Just a reminder, you can go now. Why are you still here? Blood blocks. The show is over. And we're back! A new episode of the... No, no. <laughs> we're done.